Let's do it. Oh, right. A live persistence. A live persistence. Mm. I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look too alive to me. Okay. Welcome, welcome back to the second week of Bad Frag. I am your usual host, Remy, along with my two co-hosts here, who can say good day. Uh, Whale. Hello. And Sphere. Hello. Now, you may notice their mouths are moving today. We have a little bit of a stupid solution, but now... Okay, well, you're constantly transmitting, so you're just talking to yourself uh -oh. over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to himself, looking it. up in the ceiling. <laughs> it's already yeah, broken. This, we have two guests with us today from different communities. We're going to get Liru. Can you introduce yourself first? You get your two minutes of fame and... Uh, hi, I'm Liru. I'm an idiot. I work with uh, TSB mainly, but I also work across four other different communities, and that's all I need to say. Easy, easy. Tanaka. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Tanaka. Uh, a lot of you guys may know me from Coalition. I'm the guy who runs all the community operations there. But uh, other than that, that's about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to turn on voice activation on TeamSpeak. It's just your mouth isn't moving. <laughs> and you also have no face. It's just incredibly uncomfortable. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, I'm he's so got confused. a custom face set up. So I've got a custom face, but he's showing my custom face, which looks really, really awkward because it's plastered with my symbol. And oh. I just... To me, it's just... Yeah. This is a feature, not a bug. All right, I'm working on it. Whale is a magical being. We can like, whenever we're playing in ops, we can hear him from several hills away. He's not shouting, so it's just well. his I voice carries. You, it's psychosomatic. You're just so used to the melodious sound of my voice that you pick it out <laughs> at the distance. Nothing to do with my volume. Most of these topics are of mind creation anyway, so I'll get this introduced. If I'm a new player and I want to get into units, what do I do? My recommendations for you, and I think most of us will agree on this, first and foremost, you're going to have to learn the controls of the game. I'm not going to tell you them here and now, but if you go on King of the Hill or a public server like that, it's usually a good place to get used to shooting and looting and running and gunning and all that kind of stuff. After that, some people would tell you to maybe play different game modes, stay public, but I'm honestly trying to convince all y'all listening here today or in the future that you should probably go straight to a unit. If somebody just learned the controls, they're probably gonna wanna go straight to a unit, maybe after a touch more experience of, uh, on little details, but uh, the best place I think to find a unit, unless you have a recommended one from a friend or colleague is r slash find a unit on reddit and i don't think many people would disagree with that it's not perfect and most of the units you will find are also imperfect we're going to talk about that in the next topic today <laughs> but find a unit is as decent a place as any to find a unit to at least start with to to feel it out to kind of realize what you want out of the armor experience and the I... only way you can do that is by jumping in I will disagree slightly there, only to say, oh, for fuck's sake, and also Dewey's on. God damn it. Um, <laughs> so I've just realized that. I will disagree slightly there, only to say that I think definitely you should look at playing a bit more of something like Capture the Island, I feel is one of the best ways to sort of get proto Milsim gameplay to see if you'd even enjoy that shit. Because it's basically just people squatting up and, you know, it's like someone going, okay, we need to go to here and do this. You know, everyone get in this helicopter and we're going to go land and, and shoot this thing. Um, and it's, and it sort of lets you do a variety of objectives and stuff. Again, I haven't played public armor in a long time now. I don't even know if people still play capture the island or if I'm just talking yeah, like a and fucking grandpa that, over here. Yeah. Go on. I would have mentioned capture the island. I did it a lot in armor too, but yeah. capture the island has been dead since 16 and there's God one server. And I, I think, I think Spanish super, the guy that runs this one server, if he ever watches this podcast, he's going to be like, Oh, they mentioned CTI. But other than that guy, CTI is kind of dead. Really? Yeah, it's all Bechti now, isn't it? Oh, is it Bechti? Yeah, B-I-C-T-I, -I, right? Okay, well, maybe maybe, maybe there's uh, there's a new generation to replace my favorite old things. But <laughs> So, back in back in 2016 for myself, there were two big communities out there. Uh, Ahoy World and 77 JSOC, who had something called Invade and Annex. And yeah. I think they're both still around today, but how we usually got people in uh, back then under uh, an old name named Luton09, who was the cane back in the day but we would uh go through boot camp uh to learn all the controls uh then we'd probably play some um 77 j soccer ahoy world uh to kind of get the public play down you know just taking random objectives seeing if you like the mechanics of working with people and then from there you'd go to find a unit or you go squat up with your favorite youtuber or twitch streamer uh, and then you just kind of diffuse yourself among, you know, the whole Arma crowd. Because there's so many different places to go after you figure out how the game works. 
Mm. That's just I mean, me personally. That was so. quite funny mentioning Loot No Nine because actually one thing I just went through a bunch of the apps recently for our unit and a bunch of like there was like a group of like five guys in a row that all mentioned that they played with him. I was like, hmm, interesting. Um, but also I looked him up like, where do I know that name from? And it, yeah, it's because he's the 40k guy now. He does uh, he does like the 40k like uh, lore and stuff. I think uh, he's quite popular yep. for that. Um, but sorry, Severe, your turn. <laughs> yes, this is this is the problem so, with uh, with latency. <laughs> that's fine. I just wanted to say that I still object to you calling me grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what When that it comes to the for. actual subject <laughs> and the matter at hand, um, when it comes down to a group that you want to get into and stuff like that, there's no, no real simple solution to it other than just go out there and find, like Whale mentioned, find a unit or something like that. Mm. The only real advice I can give is you should decide what type of gameplay you're looking for and find one that suits that mind frame the most. When it comes to stuff like King of the Hill and other game modes like that, that can give you a sort of touch into what um, PvP and PvE in armor feels like. But mm. um, units typically play a little bit different than that. So honestly, my advice is just jump into the deep end of the pool immediately, you know? And drown, yes. Good. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes <laughs> no, 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 it's me, yeah. sink or swim. It's sink or swim. All right. Wow. I, I, nice to see that whale here. Very supportive. Severe. If you can't swim, you don't deserve to live. I agree. Uh, well, any thoughts? Gets there eventually. Oh, no, Tan uh, sorry. Tanaka's just on the on the eugenic side. Hundred percent right. agree. <laughs> All right. Fair. Fair. Do you want to kick it on? Uh, kick it on a long whale or? Remy, you gotta move to America. <laughs> uh, yeah, this. Uh, to be fair, the funniest thing I just noticed is that the team speak and the 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 Discord latency are actually out of sync as well. <laughs> I heard oh, I heard no. Severe on team speak before I heard him on Discord, but only very quietly. Yep. That was. Uh, <laughs> God damn, this fucking this setup is so scuffed. Yeah, they're got... in different physical locations, aren't they? Yeah, well, yeah, even Discord's in like I don't know where this one. It, this is like a cheap one. Sydney. Honest, this well, is no. in Sydney. Wait, this is in Sydney? I, I should probably change that real quick. Just don't tell them the IP. <laughs> oh, wait, you can't tell this is an IP. This is the Discord server. 192. <laughs> Connect now, boys. Get in here. There we go. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I like how the way I timed that, uh, that server reset. It's like I cut you out. Like I wasn't letting you say it. It was just completely by accident. <laughs> anyway. L-O-C-A-L-H-O-S-T. Get in here. Let's go. One thing we should talk about real quick is uh, units with public spots, which of course mine is not, and I think everyone else here is. Uh, I think, because you, you do publics, uh, what's called, like, like people can come in literally, can't you? Or... So to, all of my ops are technically open, except for like one slot, they just got to go through like a five minute orientation. Yeah. Uh, it does make it so some ops can be very hectic when they don't need to be, and others will go stellar, but it just depends on who takes what roles. That's fair, yeah, because I know Coalition, of course, has the public slots, but yes. um, yeah. we very much don't do that because we're looking for a very specific type of armor. Uh, very, very much like uh, at this point, we have so many people applying for the unit that we're sort of just like, and like honestly, if it was public, we would not have the server capacity you know armor's net code is not good enough <laughs> it's just that's terrible that's, yeah. it terrible. is fucking awful <laughs> um we, we once did 110 people in vietnam uh just from our own unit and uh that wasn't fun that was that was just a poor choice of of mods map and too many players <laughs> but it ran um so uh and, and look it didn't <laughs> it run did, it didn't immediately crash the ts <laughs> tanaka um, so, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. This isn't fair. I'm being targeted. <laughs> Going back to that again, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm still salty. I was. That was like 4 a.m. and I was pissed drunk when I showed up. So that was that was That's an the interesting. Best type of armor. Yeah, that was that was an interesting op. Was I'll it CTO five? That was your CTO five. It was VR chat, the armor experience. That was um... when the issues began. <laughs> to be fair, it took five editions. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I will say C uh, CCO is still a fucking, it's a beautiful experience, even if I thought the op was crap. It was, it was a fucking fascinating experience, just to, just that scale. That's the, as Severe was telling us last week, big warfields was, was all, uh, mm -hmm. was all CCO. Um, such big warfields that I'd watch the A-10 take every one of our fucking kills. That was, that was how big the warfields <laughs> were. Realism. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, sorry, we, we've got a bit off track there, but, um. In terms of units with public spots, like, is there anything you recommend there? Like, in terms of just, like, 
a new player's like, oh, you know, I want to play some armor. You know, is there someone that they should go to? Some, like, any good units that stand out? You can jerk yourself off mm. if you want. But, uh... It kind of... <laughs> kind of goes back to what you guys were talking about with you know mm. how do you find a group right and so it kind of comes to what do you guys want to do you know how do you want to play the game you know do you mm. want to stick to that king of the hill mentality if, you know if so you need to find a unit that probably has respawns right so going forward to that even further Damn, it's son. like well yeah right right so going for <laughs> going even further it's like well do you want your public slots to be able to take important roles you know and mm. it's 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 just a snowball effect, but uh, yeah, <sighs> I'm, there's I'm not sure. A, uh, there's a fair few units I've seen out there who were public is basically the only public slots are like riflemen, and anything else right. is is that's that's how we are too. That's yeah. how coalition is. It's understandable. Mm. It's um significantly different from how AFI does it, which is interesting. Like like I said, AFI doesn't really have an applied membership type of thing. Mm. You come in, you play with us, you eventually get the tag. Um and but the tag doesn't actually do anything it's functionally indifferent to not having one well, meaning that the there player is one barrier there's one filter there that? speak, they speak finish. Finish. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> but, small but, small facts but, just very no, small. no 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 so, pump the brakes all right <laughs> afi doesn't just play finnish games right like we we don't have like a language gate where this person who asks you you know, hey, do you speak Finnish in Finnish, obviously? And then, like, turns away people who don't? That's not how it works there. Um, we do have international events and games where public players who... Basically, the only rule is you have to sign up as part of a group of players. So you can have, like, let's say, eight or ten people, like a squad. Hmm. And then you sign those people up as, okay, I want to, you know, make these guys a rifle squad. And then we'll find you a slot and we'll put the, you there for the event. Okay. And that's how we construct platoons and companies in those events. So yeah. even so in even AFI, you're... it is possible for an English-speaking player to participate. Go ahead, Will. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're already in a unit, there are prospects out there to try out other units in a very easy manner. And AFI is one of those. Yeah. If you have an established unit, they would most of the time be willing to at least talk to you about bringing some of your members over on a little bit of a field trip to one of their events if you're... Well, let me take it seriously. And that is kind of why we do our ops the way we do, because, so AC, if you don't know, uh, we do role listed ops, which is where we have a role list posted like four days ahead of the op, usually, and it has all the spots, um, because we do very weird ops on the occasion. Well, we, it's not like, um, you know, some units have just straight up, they have, you know, oh, we have two platoons of infantry and a command section. And that is what we have for every single op we play. That is just the, the you know, that's just what we are. Um, you know, one day we could play, you know, uh, one, one secret upcoming thing. We're playing a bunch of cops, which I won't, I won't spoil too much. Bigby's little mission. It's very fun. Um, you know, we're playing a bunch of cops, which, which is not at all, uh, adhering to a structure that, you know, we'd normally play. Uh, and then another one we're playing is like, you know, a full-blown Russian airborne regiment. And so we have to constantly change up the sort of, uh, the op board and everything. And... While yes, we could probably like okay again. I don't want to, the the main reason I don't want to ever go public is because of just I'm a YouTuber and pain. We have so many fucking applications. It's painful. Uh, Are you worried <laughs> about simps, bro? I am worried about simps, but more than anything, I'm worried about kids. I sent a fucking screenshot into the Discord the other day. We have a strict 18 plus only rule, right? Pretty simple. It's just you know you you can't come if you're not not uh, over 18, right? And it was literally just like the application list was like 18, 17, 15, 17, 17, 16, 18, 17, 16, 12, 14. And I was like, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is actually painful. Just like the, the fucking... Anyway. So <laughs> with that, we sort of... Um, as, as nice as the idea of, you know, bringing a group in and being like, okay, you guys will do this, uh, d this role. You know, we'll fit you in somewhere. Uh, that stuff becomes a lot harder when we're doing the stranger ops. And, you know, at and, and that point, it's more building the ops around the players than the other way around, which is we build the ops and the players fit in. Um, we sort of, you know, put the guys who are, who are best for their roles and positions. So, oh, Jesus Actually, that's, Christ. that's an interesting interesting uh, subject. Like, just real quick before we, <laughs> before we carry on. Uh, SM's just told me in chat we now have 3,016 applicants as of today. Um, most of whom are rejected. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Severe, carry on. All right, so that's actually something I, I wanted to touch on at some point. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be now, but 
ops constructing them, whether you fit them to your player base or the player base fits them. I feel like that's another subject, perhaps future in down the line, where we can mm -hmm. probably delve into more. I did want to add that AFI does things similarly to what you just mentioned, which is that you know you have a roster and then you fit people to that roster. Hmm. Um, it but it it's a little bit. Um, we have a group called the Shadow Council that wisely picks those <laughs> to the play in Shadow Control. Council. What? <laughs> what kind yes. of wrong with that? The Shadow <laughs> Council. Um, so when you join an AFI uh, event. You will be given uh, basically a shot, you know, like a sign up sheet. And in onto that sign up sheet, you put obviously your player name and what roles you want to play. And it's like a checklist. And you check all the ones you want to play. And then mm. you go to a separate list and you type what you do not want to play. And based on that, the Shadow Council will find you a place in the <laughs> event. We'll find you a place in this society. <laughs> yes. And it, it works out fine. Um, so you, you guys really never got over communism, did you? It just feels like the Finnish Dark Brotherhood from Skyrim. Like, <laughs> oh, like that's, that's what we actually call it. We, we call it Varjoneuvos, the Shadow Council. So the, <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know who is part of the Shadow Council. Oh my god! I just god. know that they are a shadowy, <laughs> shadowy group of administrators who I make see. the events happen. I've actually been in AFI for like five years, and I still don't know who's on the Shadow Council. So I, I don't, I, obviously not me. God, that's fucking hilarious. That's what somebody on the Shadow Council would say. Though. Yeah, that's that putting is it true. out there. Oh, that is true. <clears throat> We've got, got secret contacts. One day, I want to just like cut the power in the in like the bad Friday recording studio. It goes dark, and the lights slowly come back on. It's just the Finnish Shadow Council sat around the table, <laughs> <It's> all talking <laughs> Finnish. Freddy's jump scare. Yeah. <laughs> What are those black robe wearing creatures from the Lord of the Rings? Uh, oh, the fucking ring, ring race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god, how do we get onto this? All right, so so yeah, we do, we do things pretty similarly to what you said. It's just that, like, I wanted to add that public slots in FI encompass every slot. Every slot a public player can play, even leadership roles, mm. as long as they complete the sign up sheet and demonstrate a basic capability to do it and that can mean like hey i've played with you guys before or i've been on this other unit and i've done similar stuff and it, it all goes into the sign up sheet and everything's gucci yeah see i think that's where i will disagree with like at least that kind of thing is i personally wouldn't like to play anything like that although in saying that for fucking cc i kind of went okay it's just i have had bad experiences with bad squad leads or bad platoon leads who really fucking sucked and to I me, understand. those people completely ruin the op for the other people who are like, you know, it's like, oh, thing you know. about that. Oh, God. Oh, well. with, with CCO, with AFI's events, they do go on for three, four hours. So if you roll bad on a squad leader, platoon lead, you are stuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had, to, I had to play with Whale and CCO. Fair. Knowing oh, no. the quality of <laughs> AFI's leaders. Oh, in the quality of AFI's leaders, I, I'm, I'm just going to say that your experience will more than likely be positive. <clears throat> <laughs> For the most part. Yeah. It, it, it's just, I don't know. That's, that's where I kind of step different, where we very much, the reason why our platoon leads are, you know, carefully chosen or, you know, we only have certain squad leads is not because we're like, oh, you know, you know, this guy is the best at squad leading. It's just because, like, this guy just is a good person and squad lead. Like, you know, he knows how to make sure his squad is having fun. He knows how to not completely fuck up commands orders and just ruin the op for all of his guides you know that sort of thing um okay. that's really good, yeah. yeah yeah all right do you, do you want to step so on the next Yuru one and oh, tanaka cool. do you have any final thoughts on the topic of for new players joining a unit that has public slots i could i could feel the script in your hand when you uh said that <laughs> no we don't have a topic list i don't know what it's you're not talking word about for word, but it is a topic it is a topic it if is a topic. Have, if, imagine, see how disorganized it is a little bit already? Imagine if we didn't have a topic sheet. Lord above. I'd, I'd be would just be ranting just be about five armor. dudes talking about, uh, talking about that. Oh, I can't point when I'm sitting down. God damn it. <laughs> Stand it hurts. Up, point, sit down. I, 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 I physically, there is actually stuff. nothing more that I notice immediately in armor op than if I get in and I realize I can't point. I just, I'm just like, what the fuck? How? How? Yeah. No. You feel restricted. It's yeah, so wrong. I feel that. Like losing okay. a lid. So 
So yeah. here's what I will say. If you find yourself a community uh, and because you're looking for a new community because you're a new person and you can't point, you know it's the wrong community. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. That's actually Move the next on. topic. What a, what a segue. Uh, uh, yeah. flagged. Well, I mean, ultimately, right, uh, I think it's good. Uh, originally, Coalition was completely private, and then we had people complain, hey, I want to bring my friends, I want to bring this guy, my brother, whatever it may be, and we wouldn't allow it. Uh, and then after a little while, I was just like, well, that's kind of messed up, right? So I think, yeah, public player slots really do help you submit that experience that you're looking for, and I, you know, I think it's a great thing. Mm. Yeah, and, okay. it's, and it's definitely one of those things is, uh, hey, if you want to join the KDNXX, go play Coalition first. <laughs> yes. That's how you get if it. If you can handle us, you'll be fine with Remy. Well, no, it's just that we, we restrict to uh, to prior Milsom experience only. Because at this really? point... Really? Yeah, at this point, we're, we are so inundated with people that it's like... The problem isn't getting new players. It's getting... Okay, actually, like, this is something to sort of mention. Um, it's Well, you not, know more about this in the next section. I have yeah, thoughts on it. Yeah, not flooding the unit so much that we now literally, like, people can't get into an op. Um, oh, yeah. We'll filter for you. No problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're so, on it. It's, so it's cemented. Go. It's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> the the real issue we have right now is uh, is role lists, and this is something we sort of try to break in the community a bit. Uh, is people who are like sign up for a role list, like oh shit, I better get it, better get a spot. Oh yeah, and they grab their spot, and then on the day they're like oh shit, actually I can't play, and then they just like remove the spot, and we're just like well for fuck's sake, don't put your name down then. And then you know on the day we're yeah. scrambling <laughs> to find like ten more guys to fill the spots. That's my nightmare with CCO to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. It's when you lose like a platoon lead on the day, you're like ah oh, fuck. <laughs> and then they send admin messages and I'm like, yeah, that's that's sounds like a you problem. So uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> the rounds are already flying. Not my problem anymore. All right, well you wanna you wanna take us into the topic too? Okie dokie. Well, Lear already provided a little bit of a segue. Indeed. Next we're gonna talk about So I have attempted to join a new unit. What should I look for in these units when I'm about to join them or have already joined them, whether I should stick around or not? We're looking oh, for red for flags. Whale. If you see whale there, it's probably good. We're looking for yeah, yellow yeah. flags. <laughs> if you see whale, that's, say a, that's there's, a there's definite some units I've flag. joined just to like poke my head in and see if the horror stories are true. And sometimes they're true. So <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, as long as you salute me, that's all that matters. Oh, so before, fuck. We go, before we <laughs> yeah, go, sorry, sorry, well, uh, I do want to say if, if you liked topic one, if you're thinking about getting an arma. Here we go. Yeah, there's a humble bundle going on right humble now. Humble bundle, is right now. Ever. Bing, bing, bing. Bohemia Interactive, can you too. fucking sponsor me already? You gave me contact for free, but now I want money. Look at this. Look at this. You can get all. You've got Armor X Anniversary Edition, which I didn't even know existed. That's a thing that you can get. You've got Y Lands. You've got, you've got a bunch of Bohemia Incubator Wildlands. games that nobody cares about. You've got Take On Helicopters from you've 2014. You've got Original War, How but if you, you spend no only $24, you can get Armor 3 for quite the cheap price. You've got all. Wait, no, not all, just some of Wait, the DLC. The oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Aussie Apex. prices are terrible. Oh, yeah. Aussie, <laughs> ignore these, the these Aussie are prices, boys. Ignore it's like the fact that. In the States. <laughs> it's, it's much cheaper. <laughs> And if you pay up to 42 bucks, you can get Contact, which is pretty actually blunt. I, I quite like Contact, but... Please uh, get you it. You might want Daisy. Please get it. Please, someone. We want to play Livonia. Please Come just on. fucking get Contact. Yes, please. please. Oh, please my God. So it's not just sake. a coalition issue. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We had that for so long. We had Tanoa, and it's like, finally, we had enough people to get play on Tanoa, but, you know, it's kind of the lag was stopping us. But, you know, we could we could pull off, like, you know, a, a nice medium-sized op on Tanoa. Then Livonia dropped, yep. and it's like... Can we get five guys to play on Livonia, please? Exactly. Livonia is so cool, too. So good. I There's so many it. birds you hear. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Tons. yeah. Well, I mean, God, <laughs> we, we want to talk about Glob Mob. That's, that's step two. Ugh. Oh, no, ah, please don't. Yeah. Can, I, I, can mean... I do a quick tangent real quick? Yeah, sure, like, sure. Like, just complete random. So I was doing an op on Livonia with about 30 people. Uh, it was op tray. They were getting hunted by Spartans, and their Overwatch team freaked the fuck out and ran into the forest because a dynamic predator noise made them think there was a Spartan right behind them. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> and they literally, like, bolted into the forest and started panicking on the radio. I'm like, I, I didn't do anything, but okay. My favorite, Have fun, guys. <laughs> have you seen, I'm not sure if you, uh, or any of you watched the Reddit, Armor 3's Reddit, but some guy was posting, uh, he, he basically made a, he, like, it was fascinating to watch, because it went from Armor Dev, the subreddit there, where he's like, how can I make something disappear if you look at it? And then he went to, like, Armor 3, and he started posting images of, like, of, uh, these, like, videos he was making, where basically, like, he would okay. walk through, and there was, like, this, like, deer-headed, skull-head, like, basically cultist thing that would follow him, and when he looked at it, like, directly at it, it would vanish. And it was it was like it was really well made these little things, and then when it would like it would slowly get closer, like a weeping angel would get like closer to him and kill him, and uh, and that's like that's just Livonia in a nutshell. It's it's a brilliant horror map. Uh, I love that. It's a great map. Um, 
Sorry, what were we talking about, Will? <laughs> Topics. So, uh, we've got the Humble Bundle down there in the link if you're interested in getting Arma and experiencing some Arma horror that will make you shit your pants. But as for the next actual topic, now that people have joined the unit, we're wondering red flags or even yellow flags. Like something, a red flag would be, I join this unit, I see a red flag, I leave the unit. <laughs> a yellow okay, flag so like is, I join this unit, I see a few yellow flags, I'm like, hmm, you know, what's going on here? So... Just to set the tone here, a red, something mm -hmm. I would consider a red flag is I join, I see they have training, which is fine. I go to the training, and the training involves saluting, lining up, waiting around, referring to ranks, and wasting my time. That Raising your hand and wearing, yep. and wearing a different hat, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> you have to wear a beret instead of a, you know, something else. Yeah. 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 That'll get you. I, yeah, I'm going to go 100% there. My, my very first red flag, like, there's, there's a lot of stuff where it's like I'm half half on, but red flag for me is uh, just, if okay, actually the reddest flag, and this is the one that will absolutely stand out. I think you can certainly, if you, okay, if you want, there are probably some units out there that do the in-game, like, ranks and sir and stuff as, like, a role-play thing, because they're role-playing, right? And they're all joking, you know, not, not joking around, but, like, like they're, they're intentionally, like, trying to you know kind of like a larp they're trying to make it like a like a larp like a dnd game i can see that maybe being attractive for some people what i can never ever say is acceptable is when you're in the ts or you're in the discord or you're like when you're just talking to each other out of game and you're still expected to call them lieutenant or captain or sir or sergeant yep. that shit is the biggest red flag and you need to fucking leave that unit that is just ugh. absolutely Oh, on top of it's just cringy man come yeah, on yeah it is it's just awful <laughs> it's just fucking terrible <laughs> severe you got anything oh. um honestly so i i i've played arma for a little bit now so i've seen lots of red flags but uh, what what is a red flag to somebody else might not be a red flag to me and vice versa so i'm just gonna say that if it doesn't feel like it's your speed pass on it and find something else if, if you're looking mm, for absolute true. red flags, like, hey, you know, this might not be a good environment to stick around in. Look at how people treat each other. Is the community oh. toxic? Uh, is it somewhere where you feel like you could easily become a target of this type of behavior? Or, you know, does the shit roll downhill? If the shit rolls downhill, that's when you get out. And what I mean by that is that if there is such an artificial rank system in place outside of whatever game they're playing then it, that can just as easily be used to flex on those who would fall into the pit of actually listening to people with like a stupid e-rank so yeah don't, don't stick around for that type of thing just mm. get out so of there like, yeah 100 percent right if, if the shit rolls downhill and you happen to start at the bottom of that hill it's going to pile up around you right away uh, <laughs> if you see people with ranks that demand that they get extra respect on the team speak instantly or god forbid and this is, I think I heard it from one of you guys before. Somebody joins a TeamSpeak channel with a higher rank and they expect to be verbally saluted upon joining a TeamSpeak channel. But it's not just that. It's not just that. Severe, I think what he's talking about as That's core so is how people respect each other in the unit and whether they're going to not only respect a new member, but also each other. Whether it is a heated situation, whether they have a disagreement, they just need to be able to talk civilly. And if you join and you instantly see that people are not only having gripes with each other or about things in the game, but it seems like these have gripes have been there forever and they're going to be there forever. Maybe you don't want to have to deal with those gripes because yeah. units can be around for years and uh, you don't have to be. I, I, think I like this... how Will says what I said, but he says it in much more eloquent ways. Thank you, Will, <laughs> for being my translator. And a sexier voice too, you know? Oh, damn! No, that voice that is sexy. Is <laughs> I'm going to just on now. Oh, Are you good. kidding me? <laughs> yeah, sorry, well, Lear. I, I don't know. I Maybe don't, it's just a Finnish fetish, but... Yeah. I, I don't I like mean to get finish. personal. I think Whale's Ron. I'd rather sleep with Whale than Severe. I'm sorry. It's just, I mean, look at his getup, too. You have that whole, like, sci-fi Tron look. I'm like, so out of place right now. It's reflective on your head. Honestly, Lear, let me just come right out and say it. would be perfect. Let me just come right out and say it. Like, it's completely mutual. I wouldn't sleep with you either. Oh, I wouldn't sleep with me either in these goddamn Bermuda shorts, man. Definitely. Who's taken? I am after, taken. I hope she is listening. After seeing your this content, you, you became completely unfuckable to me. I'm sorry. <laughs>
more power to you for making proper decisions. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, so just just a potential. <laughs> hey man, great idea. Great idea. In fact, let's just talk about fuckable levels in Team Speaker's tag. I was about to say, it, yeah. If, if the first or thing. Not, upon joining the unit. <laughs> the first thing you say upon <sighs> entering a unit is two of the main people trying to fuck each other in Team Speak. You may have to back out of there. Um, I mean, okay, that's not a red flag for me. That's like. I, all if, that's that's into, if that's what you're into, brother, then I'm not, uh, I'm not so judging. But... To desperately At try worst, and bring it's a, a yellow flag. slightly a unit that back lays on track. together. They well, no! It's together! <laughs> Fuck! Like, it's like the Spartan thing, like oiling each other before battle. You know? Damn right! <laughs> yeah, it's not weird. It's just oh, a battle this... thing. Fuck's sake. Right. right, like actually, okay. so I, I don't mean to show I'm, I'm, I'm about to just fucking mute everyone else in this Team Speak channel. Tanaka, right. save us, Tanaka, so, Tanaka. What? 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 what, 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 what ranks. Red flag like and yellow flag, Tanaka. Has some ranks in the Team Speak, but Hold they're not bad. Hold up. Okay. No, Severus, I swear to God, if it's about oil, I'm gonna fucking end you. All right, I, I have. So <laughs> since we're right here, uh, on this subject, Whale, did you tell Rini about my merch idea? <laughs> for fuck's sake. Oh no. What's the merch idea? I can't follow this up. Go on. Me. Just go. I, go. I told you last night at the coalition game. I told you I had a merch idea. Oh, the bad frag merchandise. How have I never heard of right, this? Right, yeah. So I was hoping we could make some silicone sculptures and we could call it bad fragging. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. Which door can I leave in? There's <laughs> three. <laughs> <Which> door? <laughs> the door behind me doesn't work. That's locked. That's Sevilla's like dungeon. Or would it be like, like what, what size are we talking about here? Uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. We're right. not talking about I'm ordering a like, fucking alive yeah. airstrike on this Oh, you brought right it out! Is God gonna end it? Okay. Okay, this <laughs> Just... is also about red flags, right? This is a red flag yes. immediately. <laughs> Right up. No. Um. No. Uh. But yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'm cool. <laughs> to go back on a serious topic. I'm. I'm cool with ranks to a certain extent, as long as they have a purpose, right? If you have the entire U.S. military or Canadian or otherwise uh, ranking system, and there's ten of you, come on, man. You need to really reevaluate what you're doing. In yeah. Army, you know if there's what I'm a colonel Absolutely. in a ten-man unit. <laughs> uh, and then to take it even further, if you still decide to s sit there and you attend their ops or their sessions or whatever they do or their trainings. Uh, after all these red flags that you're seeing that everyone's mentioning now and you sit on a hill and you pull security for four hours and you don't do anything and you go back and sit in a one hour brief and everyone says great job you did great yeah man you yeah, come on there's it's 2020 please, please it's, stop. it's time please to stop find somewhere that's actually good Tanaka, please <laughs> I've, I've had enough of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's that too is, real that is 100% uh, one of the things I think I would, I'd say turn away from. There's there's sort of two things I'd mention uh, going off what uh, Severe said. Um, first of all, like when Severe said, you know, if you, uh, you know, leave and go join another unit. And this is probably something that I didn't realize when I was younger, especially when I was playing Milsim as like a young, as a young boy. And I didn't realize there were so many other units. I was just like, this is the unit that I know. And, and uh, if, you know, if shit is bad, which it often really was, <laughs> I was like, but I can't leave. This is my unit. And I just didn't realize there was like a hundred other units that I could, not even, there's thousands of other units I could go and choose from. And I didn't realize there was World War II units. There was like, you know, there's, um, you know, Vietnam, there's German units, British units, Australian units. I was just playing the same fucking, you know, American special forces in desert shoot Taliban operation 37, you know, again and again and again and again and again. I'm like, this is all armor is. And it was just, that was the entirety of the world to me. Um, so, you know, when you're in your unit, like obviously... If you like the guys and you know it's like they do something a little bit wrong, don't just fucking drop them immediately. I'll oh, fuck you, piece of shit. But if you're like, hmm, I'm really not vibing at this unit, leave and you will find a better unit. No point in being in some place that's genuinely making you just like not have fun. It's it's, it's, it's armor's a game. Yeah, play it for funs. If you're yeah. not feeling like it's fun, mm. go find something to do that's fun, yeah. right? Like that's that should be the core message for the entirety of this stupid game right like if you're not doing something that's fun why stay yeah. Yeah, that's just how it is i mean i think a lot of that was back 100%. in the back in the start was just i had no experience or no exposure to the idea of other units um especially because armor youtube back when i started playing was like nothing it was you know it was people filming armor 2 ops and occasionally be online like i think daisy was some of the first real armor 2 content on the internet that was like actually being seen by anyone so yeah, trying to trying to like get an idea of other units was really quite difficult, especially. And this is something I fucking hate. This is my big. This is, I'll probably say it's a yellow flag, but I I'd consider it a red flag. 
Uh, the you, you're not allowed to be in any other unit rule. I fucking oh, yeah, hate, I that. hate dual up. clanning rules. That's I my fucking hate flag. them. So fucking worse. Here, here's my here's my thought on that. Yeah. Right. If if that's a rule for your community, your gameplay is probably not good enough. Exactly. If, if your gameplay mm. is exactly. good enough, yeah. people will come back. Mm -hmm. It's done in a, it's done in an attempt to sort of, you know, keep the user base and you know not lose them out. And I can I can get. The idea of like, you know, if you're playing like the same structure and same ops every week, because I know what my old unit was that way when I played with a while back. It's like you were meant to have the same squad lead every op sort of thing. You know, you were all in the same little structure. I can kind of get that if you're like, you know, but it, it's not even just so they just like don't play with two units. Like you can play with two units, just, you know, play on different days or whatever. Like if, if you know, right. I can I can see attendance rules. I'm still not a fan of those. I don't like them, but I can I can see that they're a little bit better than just no dual clanning. That shit is fucking awful. Just that's that's awful. Um, I don't know, Sphere. You got anything on that? I... Uh, dual clanning yeah. stuff like that. Um, uh, my mm. experiences are from like I said, an open community. If mm. I I only recently joined what I would consider like an actual proper unit, which is obviously coalition Tanaka's coalition. Um. Mm. Uh, I was very pleased to find that there was no such rule there. And I feel like communities that deliber deliberately restrict uh, who you can and can't play with probably don't have an entirely clean flower in the bag, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, so, I don't know why, but one of the things you just said... Never heard of that memory. way, but okay. That is, is, but, you know, the, it's... it's um, I feel like it's a dishonesty toward their player base almost if, if they don't let people go out and play with other units. I mean, how would they even moderate that, right? Like, there's no way they could. I've got a story about that. Oh, there, there, um, there's a lot of, there is a lot of um, stories. Yeah. There's, a, there's also a lot of spying that goes on in armor, believe it or not. Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. Just fucking. Tell boring. me. I've got stories uh, I, I on can, that. I can tell you the story about someone who got into our unit and okay, this is the, this is genuinely a funny story. Fuck. Before, before I carry on for that story, because that's a full blown story unto itself. Um, do any of you guys remember having to post AWOL messages on forums? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, I don't know what it was a Severe said that just triggered that memory in my head. Oh, God. AWOL messages. So you mean you had to request leave? Yeah. You had play? to request yeah. leave, otherwise you'd be considered AWOL. I'm, I'm not even... What the fuck? Yeah. That's not a joke. I had school holidays and I was like, no, it wasn't school. Fuck, I, had, I was going back to school rather and I was like... You know, I, I had to, you know, a bunch of like projects and shit. And I'm like, oh, I can't play armor this thing. And they're like, dude, you gotta, you gotta just go on the forums and type up an AWOL request and get it approved. And I was like, are you get fucking approved? Like, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. What about the large communities out there that do that? Shit. Like, that's that just seems crazy to me. Like, like this is a fucking video game, right? Like, you can't have every person ever there all the time. And using punitive measures oftentimes drives people away, versus community builds and out of those two mm. options yep. you want the latter community building always like there's time for punitive actions but punitive actions for attending school going to work spending time with your wife like yeah. come on <laughs> like that's <laughs> whew, that's ridiculous that's uh that's again i feel like that goes back to red flags right oh that's 100 um, yeah yeah mm. that's that's just that's... my opinion obviously I understand that there's probably more to this than just, you know, what it seems on the surface. I, there's probably communities that have some sort of activity requirement. Uh, like, for example, you know, obviously I'm going to point out coalition. The only attendance requirement is that you're there every once in a while, basically. <laughs> I mean, or, uh, or just tell us you're not going to be there. Yeah, yeah or, just say, or just say, hey, I'm not, I'm not showing yeah. up for a while. I, I think your the expectation... Life for a recruiter grunt is you be able to attend half of the ops. And that's fair because it makes it clear that you're actually going to be part of the group. Because <laughs> if you can't come to half of them yeah. and you're just joining at the beginning, it varies, but that's coalition policy. For me, it's our unit doesn't have any attendance requirements at all. In fact, we've only ever removed people for not attending once, and that was the purge. Um, post, uh, I was telling you earlier about that thing we had. Um, I won't go too into detail in it just because it's not something I want to advertise. Um, but basically, we had a cleanup after that event happened. Um, and what happened was we literally just went through and... Uh, <laughs> everyone in the chat saying the purge right now. Uh, fucking, We went through and we looked at our Discord. Anyone who just hadn't spoken in the Discord or been to an op in six months? That was because it was that was the start of 2020, basically. If you hadn't uh, been there for six months, 
uh, we just removed you. And, we, and, you know, if you wanted to come back, then fucking, you know, reapply and come back, you know? But clearly, if you hadn't spoken in six months, you clearly didn't care enough about the unit to be there. Um, and we went from something like 606, 60 members to like 340, I think. Um, it was, it was about half, right? I get that kind of, it, okay, it, it kind of made me understand why people have attendance requirements, even though we have no interest in trying to actually have them or police them. We just really don't want to. We don't care. Um, but one of the biggest things, and I think this is mainly probably more of a YouTuber unit issue, is people join the unit just to be in the unit. You know, when, yep. when you tell someone this is a closed off thing, this is like a thing that you have, you know, this is a special tag, this is a, you know, this is something that you have to be in a group to do it, you know, to be in. People just want it, even if they don't actually want to use it. You know, we have people who will it's like a club. It, it. Kind of, yeah. I, we, I straight up, I have a joke in training where I'm training like a group of like you know eight guys, and at the end I go, uh, you know, it was, all right, guys, good training. You know, I'll like a lot of these guys. Are like, I mean, I really liked you guys. You guys are really funny. You guys are, you know, you people. You know, when when you meet someone, you just like you, you're like, oh, this guy's good. This guy's fun. I think it'll be fun to play armor with him. And the joke at the end of the training is always just like, uh, I will never see fifty percent of your faces again. Bye bye, because they never, <laughs> they would just never show up to an op. They just, it just yep. won't happen. I don't know. It, it's, do you guys ever get that with like Coalition or with, uh, with TSB? Like, oh. is that? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. all the time. Definitely. I don't know. I, that, that's yeah, kind and... of why I can understand attendance requirements, even though we don't use them. Wait, who from Coalition has joined just to play with a streamer? No, 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 not <laughs> for content creation. We've had people okay. join and then figure out what it was about because somebody recommended it to them and then just ghost. Right, I mean, that's happened numerous times. Or they just sit around and try to talk in Discord. And at the end of the day, that's not what the community's about, right? So Yeah, yeah. Anything from you, Lur, or in terms of that? I mean, on the topic of purging, um, <laughs> PSB, we've done it about three times. But, um, we just have a massive public spreadsheet with everyone's name and uh, where they fall and everything. Hmm. And we'll go through it, everyone that manages it, and we'll put their names in a yellow or an orange highlight. And then we'll publicly post a copy of the spreadsheet and say, hey, if your name's orange, but you're still active, just message one of these 10 people and we'll take it off. And then after a month, we just still we just delete whoever's still orange. Hmm. We, we did ours in secret. Pretty for easy a, way to do it. Quite a good reason. But um, it, was, it was very much like that. It, the, the thing is, the manpower involved was like we had like five admins trolling spreadsheets for several hours to get this done. Because oh, no. Yeah, it was painful. We, we, we have one mistake of um, Discord's role permissions actually break above a certain number of people. Um, you physically cannot see. So because my server is 19,000 people in it. Uh, they actually like the server that we have. This, <laughs> this is kind of dumb. But <laughs> the, the Kaden XX Discord is in my actual Discord. It's just hidden, um, which is just because I was too lazy to split into two. And I rather, you know, have everything in one place because I'm a lazy bastard. In the same way, yeah. Um, yeah, but the thing is there is because it's such a big Discord, when you have so many people in a Discord, Discord's actual, like, mod tools are fucking dreadful. They will, if yes. you, like, look at, you know, who has the Guardsman role, which is the role that gives you access to the Cadian stuff, it will physically not show you all of the roles. It just can't. I don't know what, what's wrong with Discord, but it's just a piece of shit. You need to use a third-party tool to extract that information and then figure out who has Guardsman tags. Um, you know, huh. we, we were only seeing like 300 people out of the 650 that actually had the tags. It was so fucked. Uh, and that's, uh, that stupid thing went on for so long to, to, to sort of fix it up. It was, it was quite painful. Um, but anyway. Right, so, do we want to mention the, uh, the spying story real quick before we jump onto the next, uh, topic? Because the next topic is kind curious. of different. I'm curious about hearing it. All right, like, so, legitimately. yeah, the next topic, the next group of topics are all pretty much their own thing. It's kind of like mission design, unit design and stuff. Um, so I'll... Oh, I'll we were going to talk about yellow flags, and there's a few oh, of them. Oh, is there? Okay, do you want to talk about... Okay, I, I had some red flags, flags too, but... All right, sure, sure, we'll hit let's, those. Let's finish red flags. Lear, what do you got? All right. Oh, God damn it! I'll just rapid fire my list here, because <laughs> I actually, I wrote these down. This is four years of ARMA in the making. Um, mm -hmm. Any unit where I have to have a certain certification to use a specific type of scope on my primary rifle. Oh my oh God, no. yes. If you need to do training to use an anti-tank weapon, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> what? Is this a thing? That is, is. That's, that's yep. a thing. 501st stat do it, and it was, it was painful. Yep. That sounds really terrible. Yeah. Uh, any training that has a 70% fail rate, and that's that's also 501st, I will admit. Mm -hmm. 
what else do I have here? Uh, any we we touched on this one, but any uh, community where if someone jumps down, someone has to yell "Attention, Captain, Major, whoever on deck," oh and everyone God. has to shout out, stop what they're doing, and wait for him to say "At ease," because those type of people also abuse that power, and everyone's yes. just sitting there doing whatever they were. And then he'll finally say at ease like 30 seconds later and then immediately leave the channel. Has Ace added face palm and gestures yet? No. no. <laughs> we can do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I, I will easy. say one thing there, literally, uh, just before we carry on. One of the funniest things about yep. us, we played Friday Night Fights uh, the other night. And this is, this is a meme in our unit now. Um, we were, we're all uh -huh. in the team speak after one of the matches. And we're all talking about the match and we're setting up the next match. And one of the guys just goes, all right, I'm leaving now. You know, bye everyone. And then one of the guys in his unit just pipes up and goes, Good night, Lieutenant. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? We All just right, well. bro we broke down laughing. All the Cadian guys started shit posting immediately in our Twitch chats. Oh my God. Like, we couldn't fucking believe it. It was like in the dit team speak, Sweet not during thing. a match, in front of everyone. And we're just like, oh God, why? <laughs> oh, it was funny as fuck. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Oh, just, uh, oh. I'm, I'm wrapping my weird. head around that I one. Then die. again, I've <laughs> I've seen plenty of bullshit like that. Um. And then my final one: any unit where you're providing. Actually, no, I got two. Uh, so first one: any unit where you are doing a job, and then someone has who has a higher internet rank than you can just look at you and say, "Hey, I'm doing your job now," and throw you to the side. Oh god, that's fucked. What the fuck? Mm. Yep. I've, I've that, um, that, that, that's pretty bad. No wonder you're so jaded, Liru. Holy yeah, Jesus, yeah. dude. What have you been through? Um, I mean, you already mentioned them, but I'm not, I'm not going to say them again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. It's my job now. <laughs> uh, so I... Okay, and then just, just, just tied to that story, I then got pulled into the high guy, like high head's office, and we had to have an hour long conversation over it because they tried to convince me I was still in the wrong until oh. I pulled out my footage. I'm like, no, this is what he did. And he went, oh, okay, never mind. I after an hour of to, being berated for not letting him step up, it was it was dumb. It was dumb. I just quickly, I hate to quickly people. Touch on the, the training of a certain. Uh. <laughs> I I still remember being so fucking flabbergasted when I went through the training because, first of all, we walked through and they're using Swap, and Swap is a piece of shit, as I made clear last week. Uh, and my favorite part of the training was them pointing out, hey, this is like a, you know, tri-droid, this is like a MTT, you know, they're teaching us what the droid, what the enemy used. And for everything they pointed, like, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work. So basically, <laughs> you'll be fighting these two units. Swap. <laughs> as Swap. Um, but no, I just remember... We had a we were the, we were the class of the of nineteen or whatever. No, I think it was like um, class nineteen. And they gave us all like a, they took a photo and they're like you guys are class nineteen. You just you graduated. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I thought this was just basic yeah. training. And then like, yeah, you need to do two like was no, no, it's a month more training to become a full member. And oh. uh, that's four separate trainings that you had to do multiple yep. hours. And I was like, oh, I'm no, <laughs> and I never came back. <laughs> Yeah, um, that stuff, that stuff was not fun. Um, but the weirdest thing is, like, I played the little, like, uh, the little, the, they did, like, a training test stop, and I just squad leader for that. I'm like, I know how to squad lead, I'll squad lead for that. And it was fun. It was great fun. I was like, I, like, me and my fellow recruits, I was like, this was good. We did good. It was fun. We had fun. And then I'm, and then I heard, like, if I want to have fun again, I have to go through several cock and ball torture sessions. I'm like, no thanks, I don't want to have fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Best red flag is when yeah. you are forced into a role that you don't want to play and they tell you it's a one-time thing. Next thing you know, you're doing it every time you're there. Oh, that's, and that's you bad. eventually yeah. just leave because you're fed of it. Fed up with it. Ugh. Are you mad? Is, is this for real? Is this for real? <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> is this for real? 506, this for real? I was builded in Havoc 1-2 and they kept forcing me to team lead as a recruit because I was quote-unquote good at it because I was Liru. Fucking Dignity for is great. Three months, and, he's just and I finally left my villain. Seventh cabin. Chat. I have stories for oh, everything. <laughs> All right. That, that's not really terrible, honestly. Like I don't understand why people would force somebody to play a role. Because they need roles my... filled. Go on, go on tonight. <laughs> my my final one is uh, powerpoints. <laughs> that's it. That's oh it. That's shit! Just... <laughs> yes. You know, I've been informed recently by somebody who joined Coalition. They came from the 15th MEU. And uh, they told me that to this day, because I was kicked out of the 15th MEU in 2011, they trained their officers with oh. my example of why I got kicked out of the 15th MEU. <laughs> and um, it's in a PowerPoint. So, uh, 
<laughs> I'm infamous over oh, there and didn't even know about amazing. it. And I, uh, yeah, I I, that's all I'm going to say. PowerPoints, yeah. I have to yeah. ask this question. Why were you kicked out? Um, I told Jester to go fuck himself uh, at the time, so this is before he was big, and oh, it was, uh, my fucking dream. it was, uh, it was when he was begging everyone in the 15th of year to upload his Reddit post that got like 10 <laughs> upvotes, and so oh. I, he came, he came to my channel, I was in weapons company, and, uh, he's like, hey, Corporal Bills, can you upload this? I was like, no, go fuck yourself, idiot, Wait, and, on, uh, we'll back. here Corporal we are, Wilson? yeah. Yeah, Corporal Bills. So if anyone joins the 15th MEU, or if you're in the 15th MEU and you watch this, hi, it's Tanaka. I run Coalition. Oh, boy. God, that anyway, love, moving on. Man. All right, cool. Okay. Wait, oh, yellow flags. Yeah, I don't, I don't I want to open the check tech because can now I'm going to get some shit. Don't. It's too I, fresh. I still work with Jester. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. Whatever. I, I love that shit. All right, well, okay, you, you, you guys think we're done with red flags? Because I got a few lighter ones there. All right. All right. Let's, Thankfully, I'm... a lot less depressing to hear about. They're just okay. things that would turn you off to a unit without being like, wow, that's horrible, is what any of your friends would say that don't play Arma or do play Arma at this point. Mm. Or above. Uh, <clears throat> yellow flags for Arma units. Things that are a little less serious. How about uh, you having to wear their tags everywhere? Digby mentioned this. And maybe mm. not everywhere, everywhere, but in Arma. Yeah, that's pretty silly. I, it's just a weird, like, advertising thing I don't like. But yeah, it's fair. Sometimes it's advertising, sometimes they need your XML to be set up so they can tell what rank you are because they have different uh, roles for different ranks. And this is what Coalition does, which is why I'm so specific about it. But mm. I wouldn't call it a red flag, obviously, because yeah. I'm in Coalition, and I like <laughs> it. So it's okay. <laughs> Pull it out. Uh, how about something maybe more people can relate to? Active player counts where a... A unit is a little too small, you got like 12 people in there, it's probably not super organized, or it's a little too big, and you're worried you might not even get, be able to play. I think too big is always going to be better than too small. Too small is painful. Yeah. Like, there yeah, are... too small is, too small is, like, if it's so small that you can't get something out of it, then, you know, you gotta go bigger. Yeah, at that point, you're not really an armor unit. You should really be a squad in another unit. Just go, because to be fair, people do that. We have people come along occasionally like, hey, we were like 10 guys who played this unit. Can we just join up with you guys? And like, you know, like, and you know, I still make them th go through the same application everyone else does, but it's like, these guys will come and join as a group and then they'll just, you know, keep playing together, but as a squad in our unit sort of thing. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry. Lira, go I was going to ask, as for big units, have you ever had to play with a unit where you signed up for individual ops, and if so, was there ever a sign up where you just couldn't ever get a role and you weren't able to play in the op? <laughs> Intense nodding. Intense nodding. Oh, I, like I mean, this. <laughs> He's thinking. This actually happened recently at a group called BIA. I signed up to be a co pilot and they kicked oh, me out on. because they wanted yeah. to shuffle us all into infantry. And then I watched my entire squad walk into mines that I already told them all that were there, and uh, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> yeah, look, that is definitely whale. I can get what you're fucking going at here. I can 100% get it. Uh, Kaden XX definitely has a problem where we have a basically a joke, and there's quite a funny. There's actually someone made a quite funny webm which I'm going to play on screen now in the edit. Uh, <laughs> ha ha, Remy, fucking give myself work. Um, there's so... a lot of people in the Kaden XX is what I'm trying to say. There's a ton of people, and AFI is pretty big too. AFI, AFI, there's a touch of slot competition I've seen there. Just a really big unit. In AFI, thankfully, the slot competition is nowadays handled by the Shadow Council. Council. <laughs> so it's, oh, no, it's, it's not a competition because the council sits there in front of their large mahogany table and shuffles people's profiles around. Mahogany! In the correct places. <laughs> yeah. Um, the witch, the witchcraft clones have decreed that you will play a pilot today. <laughs> and then he slams it to the side of a mountain. Good work. Yeah, no. So for <laughs> us, it's a... Uh, it's a case of like, we get a role list posted and the joke always is immediately it fills up. It doesn't immediately fill up, but it's because, you know, if you're, if you're asleep at the time a role list gets posted and then you wake up and you look at the role list, you're like, ah, shit. Um, yeah, time zones are always trouble. Yeah, Not much to do about yeah. that. And, and people, of course, always snipe the best roles first. Um, and then they, you know, yeah. there is definitely, there is, okay, basically, the, the, there is kind of a self- how do I say this? Like a, a self-causing problem in the unit that I uh, this that we have is basically where, because people are afraid of getting the of the roll lists getting filled up, they immediately grab a spot, whether they can actually attend or not, 
And then a few days later, they go, oh, fuck, actually, I've realized I remembered I can't attend. You know, you know if, you, if they actually check their calendar, they realize, you know, I have work that day. And then they remove their name. And it's like, well, you could have just checked in the first place and then taken your spot. But people always, like, dive on it because um, and it's something we, we try and reinforce, but it's hard to. It's hard because uh, it's okay. Can yeah. I can I defend yeah. those people for a second? Yeah, All sure. Right, because because of my lifestyle. Here here's the deal. I'll take a slot because I think I'm free, and then my girlfriend Bloodwing <laughs> goes, "Hey, you're gonna be free on this time on this day, so we can go out because you're doing too much Arma stuff." And I I don't have a choice, <laughs> so uh, I, I I blame her for it. But you know, there, there's other people probably enslaved. I mean. <clears throat> <laughs> lovely in their own relationships and love their significant others and are um forced coerced coerced no wait uh just just yeah. spend time with their uh significant others so um yeah. you know sometimes stuff gets in the way last second uh and they're uh brought away no, that's yeah, I get that. Some people are busy. I'm, they they yeah. just can't be ready at all times. They can't that's have that availability. Not some what people I'm are about, a little whipped, and that's just how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> what I what I'm talking about more is the people who actively like who just grab a spot because they think it's like a dibs list. It's like I saw first dibs, uh, and we try and reinforce quite very violently. It is not dibs because because we have this thing where people will drop out on the day. We actually have on the day we have a little sort of waiting for spot thing in the team speak where people drop into the into that channel. And then when we, you know, when everyone forms up in the thing, inevitably, you know, we're getting like 80, 90 people in a server. Someone's internet isn't going to work. Someone's mods are going to break. Someone's, you know, car is going to break down and they're not going to be able to make it the op, right? That stuff happens always. It's, it's inevitable. You know, we've got that many people trying to get into one room. It's just going to happen. And so we go to then the channel and we go, hey, come on, take, take that slot. You know, we've got the free spots for you. Um, and the reason we do that is to say it's uh, if, if you're not sure if you can attend, if you're not like 100%, yes, I can be there. Don't put your name down. But people will put their name down anyway. And then that leads to that sort of thing where it's like, you know, we have this meme where it's like, oh, you know, the unit is super full. But actually on the op day, we're missing 10 people. And we're like, well, we can't be that full, can we? If we're fucking, if we can't fill an op day. Um, and we can usually, it just requires an extra ping or like poking some people like, hey, come play because it turns out we've got free spots. Um, you know, I think kind of people once, once an op uh, is full, it kind of goes out of their head. It's like, okay, op full, me never play. You know, they just they don't just turn up on the day even if they were were gonna plan on doing it anyway. Um, so I don't. Know. Oh, I do know. Uh, one of the communities I work for, they um, have a similar system, but mm -hmm. they have everyone join in about twenty to thirty minutes early to get on the server and start setting things up, have the brief and whatnot. But then they also have it where it's like ten minutes beforehand. All of the people who had slots that haven't showed up yet, they're all voided, and now anyone that comes on can yeah. take any of the remaining slots. So. We, we do that sort of similar system where it's like at 7.30 yeah. on the dot, which is when our op starts. Like, okay, at 7.30 on the dot, check the time. Okay, anyone who hasn't shown is now, we consider them MIA at that point. Um, that's the only thing we really punish now, you know, when it comes to, like, attendance and stuff, is if you say you're going to be there, and then you aren't, you better have a good fucking excuse. Because at that point, you're just dicking us and your squad around, you know, you're dicking around everyone else who's waiting for you to come play. And you just, you know, fucking, especially mm -hmm. if you're an important role, that's when it's a real piece of shit. It's like, oh, oh yeah, great. our pilot just didn't show. That's great. Now we can't fly out. Like, you know, we can't get our guys in. That's <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely like at that point, we, we mark all the names off and we're like, all right, just, you know, anyone else who wants to come get on in, you know, spot time, let's go. Um, but yeah, well, any other yellow flags now that I've defended yeah. my unit? Slot, quite, slot uh... competition is always going to be a thing. <laughs> I feel like with unit sizes. And yeah. you know what I want you guys to think about right now as I finish the first part of the yellow flags here? What is your Goldilocks zone for op size with active players? What is a range of player counts that you think is ideal for you for fun Arma gameplay? And just think about that. Just keep that in mind. We'll go around in a sec. So uh, just uh, to, to finish up active player counts, I'm thinking you got a big unit, there will be slot competition. Keep that in mind. You can join it. Maybe you want big armor fields. That's fine. You get a small unit, you can get some more special forces action. But on the other hand, it might not be as organized. It might just be a dude and some of his friends, and that's okay, but it might not be the full armor experience. Now that I've said my piece, <laughs> now that I've soapboxed a little bit, let's go around with the Goldilocks zone. If you Real guys quick want. thing just what to step think? in is just the, sure. the difference between a big and small unit, you, you're going to lack things. Uh, people see in our units a lot, people will be like, oh, you've got like artillery manned by actual people. You've got logistics driven by actual people, you know, your aircraft are flown by actual people. You, you In a smaller unit, you're less likely to have that because, you know, if, if you have an entire logistics section, you've only got like one squad of guys, you know, how are you going to have fucking also fill a logistics section sort of thing, so... Yeah, that's just something to... That's a sort of the, the difference there. It's a whale. Okay. It's a whale. My Goldilocks zones for co-ops, I want at least 30 
and no more than 70. And for TVTs, it can be anything in the whole world. I love TVTs. So it's not, what do you think? Goldie uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say co-op with headless client, at least one headless client, 30 to 70, easily. Uh, anything over 70, you start having to reduce AI. Uh, keep in mind, I'm speaking from a server administrator and a Zeus point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for TVT, it's probably about uh, anything the Arma engine can handle, which I think <laughs> is probably maximum 128. And that's really pushing it with perfect hardware and perfect uh, basic dot configs. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Lure? I'm in agreement Lure? with what you both have said. However, as a Zeus, my favorite number to Zeus for is 30 to 40. Uh, is 30 to 40, you can have some infantry squads, a few assets, air, ground. You can have logistics, artillery. Uh, but it also leaves you with a lot of room on the server. So if I want to have a super well-detailed fortification or like a massive underground complex, I can still have that. Whereas if I have like 60 or 70 people on the server without doing some really fancy headless client work, uh, usually the server just suffers outright. Or I could play on Tanoa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about that the other night. Yeah. Um, look, I'm going to go the exact opposite here. I think that the best armor ops comes 17 up. I personally only, well, okay, well like my, my favorite thing in armor rather uh, is those massive operations. Not to say that I don't like the small ones. We're actually doing a couple small ones coming up, which are going to be quite cool. But, um, and they're very specific. You know, they're, they're designed for the small things. But I, I, you know, I want logistics. I want artillery. I want the full company. I want two platoons. I want everything. Um, if I could have 300 people in an armor server without it breaking, I fucking would. But uh, armor's netcode is not built for that, sadly. So we, we We're aim... hoping for armor four. Oh, here, yeah, fucking hoping. My God, man, one day. <laughs> Titan I am. Um, no, so yeah, I, I definitely... I aim around about 80 for most of my big ops. Um, it, it, again, it entirely depends on what the actual op needs. You know, I'm not gonna, just going to put a platoon if it doesn't actually need an extra platoon. But I want that platoon because that's more fun. Uh, Severe. Well, um, so again, primarily I play TVTs TVT, yeah. as I've repeated um, pretty much the entire existence of this podcast. <laughs> uh, probably on nauseam outside of it too, but... Um, I am comfortable uh, with TVTs that are within the 70 to 120 players range, um, e even larger than that, if it's at all physically possible. Is that on um, your side I'm... or both sides, like 70 players? Both sides, sides, both oh, okay. sides, okay. both sides. So, so what I mean is like, if you have 120 players, then let's say, aside. you know, roughly 60 people aside, but typically, you know, attacker, defender are a little bit strength offset um, hmm. in our games, but, uh, the larger the formations that are moving on the field, um, the more weapons and vehicles involved, that's my comfort zone. I, I want, what I want out of the game is experiencing large fights. That's my primary attraction. And that's a unique opportunity right there. If it's a big fight, you have opportunities for squad level maneuvering that you just can't do with 20, 30 people. At that yeah. point, it's just a little firefight, and it's usually one of them. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing I liked about CCO, um, just to uh, just to, to try and repair Tanaka's wounded pride a little bit, was, uh, was just seeing shit happen. Like, one of my favorite parts of the whole CCO was we were advancing down a road, and the tank company was just retreating up the road. Oh, sorry, tank company was retreating up the road because they were going for a refuel, and I just, like, hopped on the back of their tank because I was going for a piss. They were blasting Don't You Forget About Me, by the way. Uh, brilliant <laughs> songs as I, as I drove off on their tank it was fucking great uh, I was so mad I couldn't put that whole scene in a fucking foster clock because it, it's, uh, it's all copyright but you know they I just hung up back and I was talking to Rapsick who's a mate of mine from old SOCOM and uh, and we're just chatting we're just like you know oh, so what are you guys doing like oh we've been over here we've done this we've shot that and, you know we, when I, uh, I was like oh yeah we went this way and we saw the A10s do this and you know occasionally a Cobra will fly overhead on fire and it's, it's just like it was really again <laughs> big war fields um, it's, it's yeah. I had an entire video talking about radios and why they're the best thing in armor and that's basically the, the the thesis of the video is that the entire point of radios and it proximity comms and everything is to connect experiences of different players together so you know when i jump on the back of the tank i haven't actually seen what that tank has done but he has just had a wild adventure and you know now he gets to tell me about it and we get to talk about it despite the fact we we're playing the same op and yet he had a totally different experience and we get to like compare experiences and stuff and that's that's what i really that's like. that's my favorite part about running it to be honest with you yeah. i We'll have units, entire units, sit in TeamSpeak afterwards and just talk about their experience. Like, it, it was a, you know, real war story. 
Mm. And, you know, at the end of the day, providing that experience is really was the, oh my God. that's Arma, right? So, so, you know, oh, like, yeah. honestly. I just love when Tanaka piped up, everyone in game turned their heads towards me. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at people that have been talking, man. I just, I try not to do it because if I, uh, if I touch it, the, uh, it's called the editing becomes much more of a bitch. So I'm, I'm very much just a static head on shot. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, all right. Do we want to, I'll, I'll quickly sum up the spying story because, uh, because otherwise we might get out of time here and then we'll step onto the next topics here. And there's anything else? No, no. All right. Just because well, somebody wants to, to hear it so much. Um, basically spying in armor is much like Eve, very common. Uh, no, Eve, uh, even is even line. That's what Eve I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 So a lot of it comes down, a lot of it was like people would always accuse each other of stealing, you know, training documents. This is really, really common among like the, the heavy Milsom guys because they would write like, you know, 40 page documents on how to walk down a road and not get shot. Um, you know, so, and they'll be like, all right, make sure you do this and do this and do, you know, and they'll write all these documents up and they'll fucking, you know, and then what will end up happening is someone gets stolen, um, you know, some someone either, or like, or when that person leaves the unit, there'll be a fight over who gets to keep the docs. Is it the unit or is it the guy that made them? And, you know, someone will be like, you know, they'll download it and they'll send it to another unit and then they'll get accused. You know, that shit happens all the time. Um, what happened to us was someone literally just, like, joined the unit and, like, I don't know why. They just didn't like me. They were like, I've joined Rimmy's army unit and it's bad and it's awful and it's really dumb. Um, and the thing I found funniest about it was they basically, what, they had, like, a paste bin of, like, why the unit was so terrible. And mm. they, all it was was just our fucking documents that we give trainee, like trainees and like people they have access to. Like, you know, here's here's what you do. You know, here's what the roles mean and such. You know, like all that sort of stuff. It was just that copy pasted into a paste bin. And it was like, there was no, like, it was just literally that. I was like, okay, all right, thanks, you dickhead. Um, but then like <laughs> all the other stuff, they got a bunch of shit wrong, which is my favorite part. And this is why it's still a fucking meme in the unit. Because it was stuff like... Um, they said that the moderators of the Discord were the ones who were in command, or like the moderators of the unit were the ones who, who get command, like the platoon commands. Um, which isn't true, and you can also see it's not true even if you're not in the unit, because you can just look at the Discord where all our tags are, and you can see that mod is an entirely separate tag to command, and that there's only like two mods even in the Cadian, um, and the rest of my mods aren't in there and all that sort of shit, and it's, it's always sort of like, it's just like all this bullshit stuff, armor drama. Um, that it was so much fun to, and they, and they, they were acting like the fucking, they were acting like James Bond had just infiltrated the unit uh, with all these rockin' write-ups. And they posted it everywhere. They tried to post it on, like, Armor 3 subreddit and just got deleted by the mods. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> it wasn't a screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was why. Um, it oh, was just no. It was just a right laugh of, like, I don't know why they wanted to fucking um, try and fucking, what do you call it? You just hate on the unit, but they did. And I was like, okay, you weirdos. People are um, dicks, dude. People are dicks. There's always there's people out there that do that, There's members from every unit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is that is kind of thing. Uh, Severe probably doesn't have this as much as the rest, but uh, you always get the people when you kick them for being, for, for even for very, very justified reasons, you'll always have someone who gets incredibly salty to the point of, like, ha like hating on you past the unit or, like, you know, like, going to other units and shit-talking you or just, like, trying to be negative towards you rather than just leaving and going and playing with someone else. Um, it just proves you were right. <laughs> so, you know? Like, I got a small side story. Like, oh, yeah. literally yeah. two sentences. Uh, uh, one of the biggest, saltiest guys that we kicked out of TSB went to other groups and accused TSB of spreading alt-right wing propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> Not even <laughs> kidding. He made this massive forum post to threatening that we were all spreading alt-right wing propaganda and he was going to expose base. us all. You should send him yeah. deodorant, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so yeah. Um, armor units have a lot of that severe, a lot of a lot of spying and bullshit, and and people sort of armor dramaing between units, and we try our best to clamp down on that, and that's why we don't do a fucking like a democracy unit because that shit is just rife with. Oh boy, he said he said he said you know vote for this, vote for that shit. You know it's it's awful. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, mu I, it's, it's much awesome. better that there is a shadow, the, the shadow council. council. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the different. Uh, I like the shadow different council. Armor seems to be doing work. Okay. Yeah, we've got we've got the dictatorship of the K uh, dictatorship of the Cadian XX. We've got the uh, the shadow council of uh, of the <laughs> AFI. <laughs> oh god, it's uh, it's it's something else altogether. I don't know. It's it's just it's just a fucking video game, guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> like really. <laughs> Well, coalition uh, isn't that bad, right? With our headquarters. 
Well, has anyone ever oh, cool. no. and then written, a, written a manifesto about it? No, not yet. Can we get somebody to do that, actually? Can I, can I get a guy on that? Somebody out there watching that? Appreciate you. I can you. send you some fanboys. That'll probably no, they, do it. <laughs> they, uh, they call it a tenocracy, I think, still to this yeah, day. So. That's, pretty That's pretty good, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Good. So we've got the tenocracy. We've got the benevolent dictatorship of the KDNXX and the Shadow Council. What, what's next? Oh, uh, yeah, Lura, what, what about you? What do you got? Uh, my right hand man runs everything for me. He's the dad of TSB. I'm the mom, and um, we're both disappointed with all of our children every single <laughs> so operation. It's a, it's a family. benevolent the family. dictatorship, the dysfunctional the family, family of TSB. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Well, dumb stories, armor drama aside, we've had that stupid fucking segue. Let's uh, let's move on to the topic number three, I believe. Well, you wanna you wanna introduce us here? Yeah, if we're gonna keep up, we need to do that. But uh. How how amazing are the stories you guys have about oh. someone paying money to get special treatment? Oh, I don't actually have many. I do know. I do know. In a, I okay. One thing I will sort of rag on Socom for. I have a laugh. At, I did it anyway because fair is fair. But also I'll laugh at him. Um, when I started being popular on YouTube, uh, and this is good. I was popular for my Hearts of Iron videos, not for my armor. Right? I was being popular for uh, Hearts of Iron, so I was getting money out of that. And I was like, oh man, this is great and all that sort of stuff. Um, the SOCOM guys kind of like pulled me into a channel at one point. No, it wasn't pulled me. I think we were just talking in a channel and one of the lead guys was there. And he's like, um, Oh, so, uh, so you're making money off of YouTube videos and, uh, and you're posting SOCOM content. Uh, you know, oh. uh, we have oh, like a no. donation link. Uh, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I ended up just giving him a hundred bucks because again, I was mates with, with like, most of the guys in SOCOM. I was like, fuck you guys, here's a hundred bucks. And I was just like, you know, go, go fucking <laughs> jump. But that was such, such like an awkward thing where I'm like, you really shouldn't yeah, do that. Yeah, just say it, you know? Yeah, just say it if you're going to do it. If you're going to do that, do like a, do like a fucking, hey, we need donations, otherwise server shut down, please help. Or just don't be a weird fucking pushy cunt. That was kind of fucking weird. Yeah, oh yeah, Digby, as Digby says in chat, when you fuckers edit the videos for me, then you get money, otherwise fuck off. <laughs> 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 oh god. Yeah, no, it's um, Okay. It's something else. It's it's just a bit it's a bit of a uh, I don't know. I'm uh, donations I'm as so we actually have a donation link in the KNX. I'm really uncomfortable with ever telling anyone that we have that. Um <laughs> I just kind of fund everything myself because at the end of the day, I don't care. I make good enough money to do it, and it's more drama to constantly keep up with donations and keep pushing donation drives. And, you know, if, if, if people are donating, then, you know, there's a reason to fucking, you know, you can't fucking... It's, it it com becomes less my server as well if I do that. You know, at that point, I'm like... Right. I, I have to make sure the server's working and available for them at all times because they've paid for it. You know, I'm not fucking... I'm not, you know, able to just be like, hey, i got to take the server down and fix shit for two days um, without feeling like a piece of shit sort of thing, so, I don't know. I, I'm, yeah, kind of half-half on donations in general, but I can get why people who can't just fucking, who don't just have, you know, spare cash lying around need them, and they are 100% a necessary thing, because people don't, people don't remember armor units run off servers, you know, so armor ops run off servers that you gotta pay for. Those don't come free. There's money there. A lot the of servers them. tend to catch on fire. That's what All you guys the fucking don't see. time. <laughs> yep. You got a long onboarding process in a unit, like you join. It's kind of a yellow flag if the admins don't bother to check your app for three months. Usually, wow, fuck it's you. not a deal Hitting breaker. Like that, sometimes eh? they have reasons for that, <laughs> but sometimes it happens. And I'm, I'm talking to not Coalition, don't worry. I'm not talking to Kaden XX either. We're I'm talking quick. to TMTM, really. <laughs> Good. How TMTM, TMTM don't check TMTM. those apps. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Kahula yeah. got in. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Whale? Because we, I think we've been on this topic um, too long at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, to, to wrap it up, I guess, just when you're joining a unit, boys and girls, generally speaking, try to find a VOD, skim around, see how they feel, and when you are in, keep a lookout for all these yellow and red flags. Keep those eyes and open. And remember that you're, you're not fucking bound to the unit. You can leave. That's just, No matter what they, they try and fucking It also depends on what you, you want to get out of it, you know? Yeah, true. If you're, if you're a mission maker, I mean, at, you're going to want to look day, for mission making resources. If you fucking adore saluting, verbally saluting someone when they come into your TeamSpeak channel and love sitting on a hill and doing nothing and trying to spot a single Taliban fighter through your fucking <laughs> iron sights for the next six hours and you enjoy that, then fucking play that. We'll all make fun of you, but go play it. That's what you want to play. Go play it. it what you want play to what you want to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you want to fucking, you're having you fun do, with do. that. Yeah. 
fucking that's that's your thing so before You're i let whales say it. anything else so guys i'm saying topic three uh we're gonna move away from that for just a bit we're gonna talk about something that we sort of uh, we will have a little bit, little bit chit chat with last week and uh, and sort of it's a bit of a related topic um in terms of what equipment does the average gi need in a mission so what does the average Ooh, bog standard soldier need in a mission um, and that is something that also sort of new players can sort of look to as well, because, you know, what sort of things are they going to be looking at actually using? Um, so I think for, for once, uh, Lyra, do you want to kick us off? We'll, we'll start with the guests. We'll let them kick off. All right. The Hueys are going behind me. I can hear the Vietnam music because I have so many bad experiences <laughs> of coming on a mission and only spawning with two bandages and an ace advanced medical op yep. and i just look at it and go do you guys just expect me to go fuck myself here like <laughs> yeah and i just loot uh and then i get yelled at for looting faks off of dead guys for getting more bandages <laughs> you're personally attacked uh, no no i'm just joking <laughs> uh, Tanaka, do you want to talk uh, about uh, saline real quick? Because I've got something I'd like to talk about. Hey, no. salt water is great. <laughs> anyway, can uh, we blood bags somewhere? Yeah, right, sorry, go on, go on there. <laughs> if there's anything else. Uh, another one is uh, spawning in with my primary weapon and then finding out all of my mags are incompatible with my primary oh, weapon. Fuck. So I'm just supposed to throw How it at something. What happen? Oh. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, my biggest thing is uh, making sure that everyone who has a specific role has a specific equipment for that role, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like, medics have all their medical gear, um, even if they have to find it at a CCP or field hospital later. Uh, like, blood bags. Um, mm, yeah, like, obviously, mm. obviously, appropriate <laughs> weapon, right? You know, uh, yeah. I, I don't really mess around with advanced stamina too much with ace, or, or ace stamina, whatever it's called now. I know they changed up a bunch of systems. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that really can... Screw GI over, so at least nine mags, right? I mean, that's that's like the base milsim standard. So Ooh, other than that, that's about it. Seven. I could really think of. Yeah, some people go higher, some people go lower on the mags, but generally speaking, the equipment that you have is the game that you're going to be playing for the next two hours. So if you don't yeah. have ammo to shoot, if you don't have grenades to use, if you don't have the medical supplies you need, then you're going to have a bad time. But right. I'd say my recommendation, mm -hmm. like just giving a specific opinion, I suppose, is. I think six bandages is enough. People are going to say no to that, but of course it depends on medical settings and the ones I play with are usually instant death. So if you're playing in a situation where you're probably going to die, six bandages, seven spare magazines, okay. maybe a grenade, always a smoke at least for signaling or occlusion. Mm -hmm. And then there's something I'm sure I'm forgetting, but you know, it's <laughs> nice to have map tools too. If you're using ACE, map tools, just uh, give them to everybody. Give them to everybody. Shovel is very true. The Cadian fucking adores their shovels and bitch when they don't get them. Um, Entrenching tool, phrase. Uh, if I had to crystallize my opinion about what the average GI needs, um, mm. like as a baseline, and obviously there's going to be people who disagree with it, and there's going to be mission design differences and everything, but to me, uh, it can pretty much be uh, crystallized in six points. Mm. Uh, one is personal weapon and ammunition, three to six magazines, a smoke grenade, a fragmentation hand grenade. Two is personal protective equipment, prophylactics, flak jackets, etc. <laughs> if any. Um, three, personal tourniquet and aid kit, whatever that means, be it six bandages or whatever mm. else. Uh, four, map and compass. Five, map watch. Uh, well, <laughs> map tools, that's debatable. Yeah, six, true. most yes. important, this is the thing that makes or breaks you. And it's mm. something you have to have because if you have it, no bullets will touch you, and an unseen invisible force will protect you from fragmentation. And that is you say. a good attitude. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's act that's so good. Oh god, that's great. I thought he was gonna say a radio. Never mind. No, like that really <laughs> resonates with me. I, I understand that too. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been in plenty of ops where, like, if someone comes in being just a, a jerk or a toxic little shit, like, they ruin it for everybody else. So yeah. I, yeah. I feel that on a personal level. They man. also tend to get put on point. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they tend to get ambushed from behind by seven different enemies. Hmm, strange. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I think definitely that, that you pretty much touched on everything I'd probably want to say. Um, in terms of me, I think the average GI, like, I don't think radios are necessary, obviously, depending on the sort of op. Um, I think optics aren't necessary either. I think you need to learn that your iron sights work and that there are various systems to work with and you don't all need a oh, fucking yeah. four to eight times scope on your fucking shitty rifle. Just get in closer, you morons. 
Um, but I think, God, I'm trying, to, trying to actually cover like basic GI stuff. I think more than anything, and this is something especially for new players, uh, I hate loading into a mission and not having my kit at all. Like, having to build my own kit from an arsenal. Yeah, uh, for arsenal. obviously, dress up. Like, that blows. Yeah, that's, Barbie that's dress up. something. Barbie dress up. Yeah, that's something that sucks. It sucks on all sides. It sucks on the mission maker side because everyone will fucking spend 20 hours getting dressed. Oh, sorry, that's, that's sorry, command side rather. Everyone's going to spend 20 hours getting dressed. Mission maker side, all your guys are going to take like 12 mags, six grenades, a, a spare rocket each. And it's like, you know, this is wasn't, you know, this is not what you're meant to take. And then, of course, people are going to bitch about being overweight because they took 20,000 kilos. Um, that's and a red players, flag, by the way. Yeah. On, uh, that's actually entirely <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. On a player side, I load it and I go, oh, fuck. You know, now I've got to figure out, okay, have I got all my kit? Have I got all my stuff? And of course, like, a mission maker knows what players need. Like, we all know what players need. Your average bog standard poor fucking new recruit probably doesn't need, you know, doesn't, oh shit, I forgot my tourniquet or I forgot my entrenching tool or whatever, you know? Oh, God, no. That shit, that is what breaks me more than anything. Like, I will happily work with, like, I I, I think six and one mags is the is the perfect number. I think even less is fine because I prefer conserving ammunition and, uh, and logistics support re refilling ammunition. I prefer that stuff. Like, I'll happily go with with a really small number of mags and like, you know, you know, only only a grenade or two and you're know, like that sort of stuff, as long as it's all given to me at the start of the fucking mission. And if that right. stuff is wrong, I'm really mad. Um, six mags. Yeah, Rimmy, six mags. it's yeah. a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is though, it isn't. And this, that's the entire reason why full auto was so fucking not used for so long was because people just kept dumping all their bullets out and like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm not hitting anything. Six mags is plenty. Six mags is plenty of ammunition. Like, that's my until opinion. Until it for, isn't. For your average, until it isn't, but for your average GI, six mags, smoke grenades, hand grenades, that's plenty to carry already. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Obviously, the realities of the situation will dictate whether that's enough mm. or not. And I will argue but, two things. Uh, I mean... Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right, I'll argue two things there with the um, whole, like, mag things is... Uh, it might not be enough, and that's the point. Like, that's that's part of the point of armor. We have logistics units to rearm you, but the point is that, like, sometimes you're going to have to consider, all right, guys, we need to actually start conserving ammo here. We need to be a little bit more careful. We need to, you know, we need to, you know, we've been fighting for the last, like, straight hour. We're dry on mags. We need to retreat and get more ammo. That's kind of the point. You know, if, if an armor, sorry, if a squad goes in with, you know, 20 mags each, they're just going to fight forever. You know, it's the same thing with medical supplies. Eventually, you're meant to run out of them if you keep getting shot. And that's when you need to retreat and get actual medical help. Um, but Whale, I think I'll, I'll argue that uh, you can do just fine with very few number of mags. Like, and if people get panicked when one person has burnt through all their ammo. Um, like, uh, no, in... I, I like shooting. Yeah, like yeah okay, shooting, that, that's but fair. I think six spares is enough. I agree. Yeah. I agree with Sierra um, here. I actually was, think six spares is uh, enough. Gun, gunboat that... diplomacy, Whale, that, that you led Bravo in, remember? Oh, you're implying yeah. I have the memory of more than a fruit fly. Uh, yes. yes that's <laughs> okay, sure. Well, point is both you and Evan's team, uh, the first Alpha Squad, were both... You both reported, oh, we're black on ammo. And I said, too bad, you're not. Uh, and I, I basically believed that you weren't, and I told you to carry on with the assaults. And hey, presto, you guys actually succeeded in the assaults. Evan used a pistol for the entirety of that fucking town, and we completed the assault just fine. And then we got our resupply. The reason why I said no is because Logi was fucked in that op, but anyway... Um, some of us looted. That's why. Yes. Well, <laughs> well. Here's the thing: is Evan's squad, who I was with, didn't loot, and they and they went through just fine. They were brought a black on ammo, and they went through just fine. Turns out, when you have, you know, if if one guy has five mags, that's like a mag that he can give to half the squad, and suddenly you've got five guys mm -hmm. with a mag, and that's a lot of fucking firepower. And when you're not, you know, when you're not in constant massive combat, a mag of two each is fine. You know, I don't know. I I kind of just get sick of people overloading with mags because it completely changes the game to me. It means like well, there's just... a solution for that. Yeah, go on. Do you know what I'm about to say? Script. No fatigue. Oh, fatigue oh okay. Is well, a we solution. do. We have fatigue, but mags that don't weigh enough, I find, um, compared to compared to everything else. You know, like if you up fatigue enough that mags make enough of effect, radios become literal fucking like cinder blocks, and it's horrible. And you're like, ah, let me keep up with my team. It's awful. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, I think we've pretty much covered that. Was that was a nice and easy quick topic? Got two more. Oh, oh, go on. Yeah, if you don't mind. All right, so on. I I even have devised little scenarios for both of these. Yeah. Hmm. This okay. Prepared. Oh. So imagine you're a marksman in your Ooh. squad, and you're yeah. going in the thicket. You're uh, let's say you're on Takistan on a hill, 
they're gonna hit some hajis and the hajis they got a zu on the ground and mm -hmm. you know they got the gunner and the commander that's actually uh, operating it and you know uh, that I if know you this. miss that shot <laughs> you're gonna get blown away so you line it up you hit page up thinking it's a vanilla ranging system it's not you hear the little click of the scope and you're like wait but i didn't get a range card how am i supposed to know but you fire you miss today, and the you blows you all the <laughs> i fucking hate ace scopes holy shit just the uh, worst. I, as someone so who adores like a lot of ace sniper operators, nah, so they right. they miss all their shots. Let's not go. Yeah, yeah. let's let's, let's not give anyone credit. Everyone they all fucking miss. Example: Last night, the coalition game, right? The coalition <laughs> game had a yeah. had a sniper team in it, uh, anti-material rifle sniper team. Uh, two guys slot in it, spotter uh, and shooter, and mm. I was like, "All right, boys." Uh, we were supposed to cross a road, but the road was covered by a 50 caliber machine gun from a three-story factory building. And I'm like, mm. all right, let's get the anti-material boys up here. Let's take that emplacement out. And they, you know, they spend all this time crawling into position, setting up and everything. And I'm like, right, okay, he's 350 meters away. Can you hit that shot? And the <laughs> sniper's like, yeah, 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 I can hit that shot. You know, lines up his target. Uh, his spotter is right there calling out the distance and he fires. He misses, hmm. fires again, misses a second time, <laughs> fires a third time, hits the machine gun's ammunition box, and at that point, the 50 caliber machine gun begins spraying at the platoon in panic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fires the fourth shot, kills the gunner. Um, oh. And I was like, man, that was excellent marksmanship, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's look, good for, you know, standard operating procedure, like I guess. Mission? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, for for me, I, as, I even like, I adore ace artillery and all that sort of stuff. I just find ace scopes as a system to be a real massive pain in the ass. I don't find them fun compared to ace. Like, ace artillery is an entire system of fun. Ace scopes is like, we took the vanilla ranging system, which already worked, and then we made it worse. It's like, thanks, great. Now I have to look at a separate sheet when I want to range my thing instead of just it telling me what my ranging is. Okay, great. I don't know. Am I meant to be a fucking Your trained military soldier? The temperature of the wind. Oh, don't fucking start. <laughs> no one actually And shift K that. for the wind speed going in what direction? Yeah, perfect. Actually, quick question, just to completely <laughs> off topic there, but does anyone notice that I think as of like a few ace updates ago, sh like wind speed was totally fucked? Uh, if you turned on, yes. it was a setting called ace wind per map or whatever, or like realistic wind. Um, Because Maybe. Every, every single map I was on, and this is, we noticed it in training mainly, Um, every single map, would have at minimum like 80 kilometer an hour winds and we were just like, the hurricane the yeah it was like it was insane you'd throw a smoke grenade and it would just be a fucking line because it was going the wind was going <laughs> that far <laughs> and you press like shift k and it's like it's like fucking what's it like six dots what i don't know wait, six is 60 kilometers i think um anyway it was yeah it was so i think you had to yeah we, we played on tax stand once and all of our shots were just curving after like a few hundred meters <laughs> i'm like what the fuck is happening and we realized it was because the wind speed was at just a stupidly high level. And the thing is, you don't hear the wind, so it doesn't—you don't notice it because it's because yep. ace wind doesn't actually make noise. It was ah, oh, we had to turn that shit off. Gotta look at so them trees. Bad. It's like yeah. that one Hollywood movie where the dudes are curving bullets. The Looper, yeah, it was. Curve the bullet, John. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was it was, was it wanted? Looper? Was it wanted? There was wanted too. Was it, wait, oh, wanted. wanted what, was that the one with Morgan Freeman where he like spins the gun and then he yes. shoots it across the? That's wanted. Okay, I thought what was Looper? No, Looper was the time travel one. Wasn't it? Yeah, Looper. Yeah, yeah. Um, Looper's where he kills himself from the. Oh, but no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, fucked up. I have, have to censor that out. Is that what, what's that? Now, like fourteen-year-old movie? Fucking hell. Good. All right. Um. Sorry. So on to on to our next step. Sorry. Actually, Lure, you had one more, didn't you? you had one more scenario. Okay. Or, yeah. One more scenario. Imagine you're playing an SOG Vietnam op. It's All the right. dead of night. You're crawling around trying to find uh, Charlie's AA position <laughs> so your Hueys can come and pick you up think you found it but you go to check your map just to make sure and you don't have a flashlight oh, to look at your fucking map and it's just black yes that shit's <laughs> fucking worse that's for realism so you squint in real life too okay I, i've uh, been there I, I love it with me because i'll forget ops. the flashlight sometimes i'll just turn the brightness up on my screen but then my <laughs> chat's like they can't see shit i'm like what are you talking about oh right because my brightness is affected through obs it's like yeah. i swear it's right there guys just trust me 
the real pro move is to pull out your cell phone, Tanaka, and use the light of the screen to be the <laughs> I'll do that next stream to look like a real idiot. Man, what are, what are they, uh, so I think, wait, well, you're talking about that whole thing where you're going to get the armor map on your phone. Um, get yes, that up. Yes, Dead Men, our, yeah. our favorite TFAR dev, yeah. is, cons you know, there's Athena, that second screen application that came out, it was cool, and then nobody used it. Because, yeah. uh, you know, it was a little closed source, it, had, it was rough around the edges, and it can only do a certain few things. This one that Dead Men making, he's promising if he does end up releasing it to the general public, it will be a lot more flexible, and it'll be usable for pretty much anything. So that would be cool. It would be like a second cool. screen. You could have your map on there. You can have a blue force tracker or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Uh, that's that's topic five. <laughs> We're not gonna make it. Anyway. We're not gonna make it a topic no, five. That's, but that's okay. We got twenty minutes. So we'll see. All right. So, real talk. Uh, this is this is sort of uh, my own topic here. So I'm gonna try and intro this. Um, and it's something that's sort of come up in the unit a few times. Is the idea of specialty riflemen getting annoyed that their role wasn't completed versus actual specialties in ops. So what I mean by that is let's say you have a rifle squad and you have a man with an AT launcher. You've got a guy who's got like a law or whatever, right? So he's like the AT rifleman, right? Um, versus when we're saying like actual specialties, that's like a team of like dedicated anti-tank hunters. You know, people with like, you know, it's like four guys with like a bunch of javelins and uh, or like tow missiles or... Um, you know, like an AA team, you know, with anti-air missiles, you know, that sort of stuff, as, like, their own team. Um, one thing I consider fair criticism of an op, or, like, a problem with an operation, is if you have that dedicated team, um, who are, like, heavy AT or anti-air, and then they don't get to do their role. You know, there's no helicopters to shoot at, there's no jets to shoot down. You know, like, well, why did they exist? What, what do these poor bastards do? Oh, Lyra's leaving. <laughs> 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 However, what I have a Another issue with is kind of people who will always bitch and moan in debriefs like, Man, I was the light anti-tank. I didn't get to fire my rocket launcher. Um, which is kind of the sort of like, you're not meant to. You're there as a contingency. You're there as a, in the event of tank, break glass. You're not, you know, dedicated. And and armor players, I think, get obsessed, especially with... <laughs> they're just going back to the wall. Especially, um, I noticed this with demolition players. Um... If, if we ever include an EOD or, like, a mine layer in an operation, they will be, like, squad leads will report to me over radio, help, help, they keep saying they want to put mines everywhere! What do I do? <laughs> just, like, just calm down. They can put mines down when the order is given. So, I don't know, like, how do you guys sort of handle that? Like, do you, do you run those sorts of actual specialties often in ops? Do you know, do you, what do you, like, are you, do you consider that you're... Okay, this is something else that's kind of there. Do you think that just being a rifleman is okay? Or do you have to be yes. a rifleman grenadier, rifleman light anti-tank, rifleman medic? Do you have to be like a specialty? I don't know. So that, that's oh, my sort of, I think you've basically heard my side. So I'll, we'll go around. Uh, Luru, I think you've just oh. given yourself fucking brain damage. Uh. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I've, I've been in plenty of units where we come in with all this specialized shit and then never use it. And then everyone complains about it. It's to the point when I build a Zeus Ops, I, I literally build it based off of what we're going to do. So if we're going to go defuse a bunch of mines, I'll make sure there's an EOD team to do that. If we're going to go shoot down a bunch of helicopters, I'll make sure there's some AA stuff so people can take it or a dedicated role. Because mm. I've been... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's really hitting home right okay, now. Okay. I, I hate the shit talking. I hate the shit talking. 501st, first op I officially played. 55 <laughs> of us went down on Southern Sarani and we spent two and a half hours counting 350 moisture evaporators because there were no single fucking enemy AI units down. It was the stupidest fucking operation ever. And then someone bad fragged at the end and killed like half the people. And then he got banned, even though everyone praised him for giving us one little bit of happiness, one little bit of joy in that operation. I hate it when I waste my goddamn time when we are given stuff and we do Jack shit with it. It pisses me off. It pisses me off. It pisses me the fuck off. Welcome to Bad Frag, everyone. Realism Milton. Oh, fucking hell. POV, you are an actual member of the Five Fingers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's give Lura a bit of a break. To knock. <laughs> got anything. Okay, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry. okay uh, I'm going to take a step further and say that all starts a mission design. If somebody yes. can't actually... Okay, so let me... Digress for a second. Yeah, All yeah. coalition missions are pre-made, right? Yep, People in the community here. make them. They get they go through a QA process. They get approved. We play them, uh, and we have an op board. 
prior to the mission. So if somebody includes a mat team and there's no armor, that's terrible mission design. 100%, if somebody includes yeah. a sniper team and the mission doesn't have some sort of purpose where a sniper team's needed and the mission designer's just like, oh yeah, sniper team. Yeah, I've seen movies. That's cool. Throw them on here. <laughs> and they don't get used. Bad mission design. And they need to be spoken to about that in that regard. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it goes a step further. It's not even, I mean, you know, Zeus operations are different, obviously, but uh, it goes even a step further to where it needs to be nipped before it even hits the mission before that's even on the server. Yeah, 100%. That was actually something I mentioned in my video. It was like, how to make an armoration, uh, an armor three operation not be a fuss to go. My little sort of like, you know, tutorial thing. Um, and the first thing I mentioned is, you start with the player force because the player force decides what the mission is. You know, if you're right. going to be an EOD, you know, if you're going to go, you know, stop uh, mines or whatever, or you, you know, even something like a live, you know, if you're playing a live and there's an insurgency, you need EODs in, in squads because a live insurgency is place IEDs. And you don't want to be in a situation where you're like, Guys, we literally can't fucking defuse a mine and we just keep running over mines because we can't defuse them. You know, you don't want to be in that sort of situation. Uh, on the opposite end, you don't want to give an EOD in an op where there's no mines. Like, you know, why fucking, why, why do you exist? Um, he's just carrying a bunch of extra shit for no reason. And that's where I'm, I feel that if a role isn't needed, just give him riflemen. Riflemen are fine. Riflemen do the shoot shoot. Riflemen are the same as any, like, you know, you might as well just give him a rifleman. And I, I think it works better that way. Um, Can I put so, a quick counterpoint to that? Yeah. So you also have to understand your community itself because you brought up mm. EOD and for my guys personally, their version of EOD is they have a vehicle shoot the IED with an AP <laughs> round to blow it up. So that works. That, don't, that does work. You yes. need EOD if your vehicle is just going to do it for you. So you got to just get in the heads of your players. If And, you know, if you've been playing with them for so long, you'll know that. But you got to just know where to optimize stuff. And that's one of the hardest things, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm One really worried about that. that can be made, so. I'm really worried about that with CCO coming up. I got to oh, figure yeah. a way to make the IEDs somewhat invisible so e only EOD can detect them. Yeah, that's... <laughs> well, there's actually some IEDs I found in testing for one of my Inapper Ops that are just invisible, which is fun and awful, and I hope you don't yeah. use, because that would be incredibly unfair. Um, Send me a link. I'm on it. <laughs> fucking TM Team Op lately where the, the UXOs would clip into the terrain of Kavala and they'd be in walls and they'd be in oh, sidewalks. Fuck. And it was I, an op I, that, by I the way, we UXO. played nine times now without having that be fixed. It's just, you know, yeah. get to do it every cool. time. Um, it's a so, feature then. <laughs> it's something yeah, definitely to touch on uh, with Tanaka said about the whole the, uh, the ops being um, sort of previewed and like the, the, the unit getting reviewed. Uh, and this is honestly something I will point out as our own failing. There was a bit of a, a problem with one of our last ops, Gunboat Diplomacy. Uh, and the biggest thing, and this is 100% what Lyra said there, where he's like the whole tanks shooting the, the mines instead of EOD. The problem with gunboat diplomacy, overall, I had a fun time. I was up at the front. I had a great time. It was a fun op for me. We had a brilliant time. Um, but it was basically the the operation, like, definition of everyone was stepping on each other's toes. So we had an anti-air vehicle, an anti-air infantry squad, and a jet. And, like, that was, so that's just, you know, the enemy had a lot of helicopters and a lot of jets, but we never saw them because the jet shot them all down. So our anti-air, both of our anti-air units did fuck all. Then we had a tank unit and an anti, and two anti-tank units and a jet and a helicopter. So the moment, oh, and a Bradley. The moment a tank appeared, it was just, you know, whatever was there first fucking nuked it, you know. And so the, the rest of the guys weren't getting to do their role. And, uh, oh, we, we also had a recon Bradley and a recon little bird thing is a little bird can fucking fly and has like a 19 no it's like a 30 times thermal camera the bradley doesn't stand a fucking chance to actually do any recon that a little bird can't do um so it was it was very much a case of like we absolutely should have caught that before the op i i kind of trusted him and i forgive me spanish i shouldn't have i should have looked at it myself uh harder i was i was busy doing other shit that week um but yeah it was it was definitely a case of though the op was fine you know it wasn't like there wasn't uh, things for these guys to counter. The fact is, like Lyra said, you know, it was basically the tanks shooting the IEDs instead of the EODs doing it. It was everyone was getting their role stolen by someone else. So they were just kind of left yep. sat around going like, the fuck are we actually here for? Sort of thing. Um, which is why Good I enough. hate Apache helicopters. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, you want to touch on this, uh, the whole... Oh, yeah, it's called especially rough I think you guys have said most of it already, actually. All right. I uh, think, well, I think Sevilla, I think the Sevilla expectations has... they carry. What else you guys got? Anything? I think severe has got, got something. something. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to, obviously, Tanaka already touched on the fact that when missions are created, just because it's a video game, obviously the structure of the element moving around on the map should be prepared for potential threats in their particular battle space. Meaning yeah. That yeah. if you're putting vehicles into the game and you want your guys to actually stand a decent chance at eliminating those vehicles, you give them the means to fight that. 
when it comes to weapon specialization roles inside the squad, they're there to augment the already existing capability of the squad to respond to certain situations. Whereas yes, the role of the automatic yeah. rifleman is to provide the primary rapid output of firepower, the role of the light anti-tank man is to destroy vehicle threats or fortified emplacements, but otherwise they serve as a rifleman. So their experiences are a little bit fundamentally different in the sense that one guy gets to shoot all the time because that's what's expected of him. The other guy is conditional on the matter of whether a vehicle or emplacement appears. Uh, when it comes to bigger things, people already touched on math teams and everything else. My experience domestically is that heavy anti-tank weapons and, you know, things like the SPG-9 or anti-aircraft attachments, they attach to platoons or company attachments. And, mm. you know, their purpose is to augment the ability of the entire force against threats that exist in their battle mm. space. You said and that again, very eloquently. It's, it's useless to have them if you're not going to make them fight something. Those players mm. could be doing something useful. They could be doing something like being a rifleman, being a driver, you know. And that's yeah, especially grenadier. true when, it's, when you talk about the net code, because right. you're, you're putting people who are lagging the server on to do nothing. Basically, and when it comes down to the nitty gritty of it, those players could be doing something that's actually fun. So again, mm. it's a question of mission design. In, in reality, of course, you know, company-sized forces, battalion-sized forces, brigade-level units, they're equipped to face whatever threats their current doctrine allows them to face, mm. uh, what they're prepared and trained for, what kind of weapons they have. Um, in a video game, we have the privilege of building the opponent we want to fight. And I feel like mission designers who create missions with redundant roles are just playing a stupid fuck-fuck game <laughs> about simulating, simulating, all the elegance that's how, what you end on simulating <laughs> simulating the fucking lameness of being in the military isn't, isn't why you play armor like, like you know uh, i think that speaks i think that speaks to the general topic of the day i think i figured yeah. it out what we've been talking about all day last time was big war feels this mm -hmm. time don't waste people's time Yes. <laughs> Don't waste people's yeah. time with your op, with your Sim gear. Simulate the fun if you parts, see a yellow flag, it might be parts. because they wasted time. Just don't waste people's right. time. Maybe, maybe, maybe like some people find it fun to go police call a parking lot in Arma. Like, okay, <laughs> sure. Oh but my God, stop, I, please. <laughs> I, would, I would argue. I would argue that it is not fun for a majority of players to find themselves in a slot where they're not doing anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not to say that special attachments or anti-tank weapons have to be firing all the time. No. But uh, when you're in a larger structure, like let's say you're in a company and the company's objective is to go and take X hill and they're in a battle space where there exist armored vehicles and you've got your mat team or hat team or whatever, then they might get to shoot once or twice. But you know what? The, the reality is that they're doing their part right then and there, and that should be inherently satisfying already. It's not like it's a complex task to create a mission that works that way. Hmm. It's really simple. It, it It's just mind-boggling to me when there's missions with that leave people standing there with nothing to yeah. do. All right, I'm going to cut you off there real quick. My apologies, man, because we are coming up right on the two-hour mark. So we're going to uh, quickly end this with an absolute clusterfuck. Blue Force Tracker, good, bad, situational way. Oh, I fucking hate it. Before nope. you guys talk, let's, let's just go around. Let's let's do this one. Fuck we you. get our opinions. I was intentionally trying to cause chaos, you piece then... of shit. Stop trying to keep <laughs> this in order. <laughs> and then we go into chaos. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging All right, fine. Get anything fine. In if we I, try I, this okay, we'll go around for me. We'll go to Lyra, then around. Okay, so personally, I absolutely hate Blue Force Tracker. The only time I can think it's okay is if you're playing like public server or playing with like people who are very new who just like have no idea how to stay together. You know, if you're, you're trying to keep fucking fresh cunts apart, you know, to, from wandering off and disappearing into the trees and you lose your members. I hate Blue Force Tracker. I think it is a piece of shit that makes commanders stare at their map and think they're playing an RTS instead of armor with actual players. And I also think it cuts down one of the most fun parts of the game, which is commanders actually getting radio reports on where their guys are and what they're doing. And also commanders being at the front and commanding. Actually, you know, they need to see their troops instead of just sat back in a fucking villa 10 kilometers away going, oh yeah, look, the map says this. Lyra, your thoughts? Blue Force Tracker? <laughs> As someone that works with casual players in TSB, I like C-Tab. I don't necessarily like Ace Blue Force Tracker, but I like C-Tab. But if you rely too much on C-Tab or Blue Force Tracker, people become dependent on it. So if you take it away for an op, they mm. get screwed. 
to high hell. So <laughs> use in <laughs> moderation. <laughs> uh, Tanaka? Uh, we use potato, uh, which is basically, it, it has its own unit markers in there. So big shout out to mm -hmm. the Bourbon Warfare guys and Paps for creating that. Um, I'm indifferent, really. I think it's really based on mission at the end of the day, right? Uh, if it's some high-tech mission, sure. If it's, you know, Vietnam, hell no. Get that shit out of here. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just depends on how commanders play. But I fully agree with what you said. Uh, I, I like to be up there as the platoon leader or the commander and actually, you know, control yeah. rather than stare at a map. I, I think definitely it gets really bad when it's like like person level. Not even like squad, but like like perb guy. Oh, yeah, that's map. too much. No matter and then, what. And then it, then it becomes a little bit of an RTS. You're like, hey, you're in the wrong house. You need to get to that house, not that house. Yeah, that's, like, that's, oh, that's terrible. That yeah. 2035. Uh, I think some of what you're describing is more of a problem with commanders or platoon leaders than it is with the tracker itself. But my quick opinion is I think it's okay depending on your op your unit culture first and what the op is like secondarily. And I think that even some relatively serious units could work it in once in a while. But in an ideal op, I would have it off, I suppose. Hmm. All right, Severe, wrap us up. We've got 30, uh, 40 seconds. All right, five points. BFT is bad. One, <laughs> removes map reading as a game element almost completely. Two, creates extremely easy game-like situational picture. Obviously, BFT works that way because it's designed as fundamentally a warfighting tool, and warfighting isn't fair, but fuck you. Uh, three, tunnel visions you. It discourages the use of your eyes and your own ability to observe. Uh, four, it doesn't actually relay that much useful information to a platoon leader uh, beyond the presence of a single man. I feel that BFT is more appropriate with larger company-sized formations with special attachments because then you can actually get something out of knowing where your platoons are, knowing where your attachments are, things like mm. that. Otherwise, I feel like it really adds very little to my gameplay experiences. People are feel free, you know, they, they can feel free to disagree, obviously. Uh, some units play with BFT more than they don't. Uh, that's okay. I just, it's not my speed. Just for context, All right. Blue Force Tracker, and I'm surprised this wasn't mentioned earlier, oh, but yeah. for players, Blue Force Tracker is, you have a mark on the map representing exactly where someone is, and whether that's an element updates. lead or individuals, that's mm -hmm. all. Yeah, and it updates all every right. so often. With two hours on the clock, two hours and 25 seconds, but fuck it, we were nearly there. That is the it. end of up. the second week of Bad Frag. Um, thank you very much, Tanaka and Lyra, for coming. We're going to do the little, uh, the basic after show, which is just where I'll run the alerts if you guys want to hang around and bullshit. But uh, this is the end of the awesome. official podcast. Um, that was good fun. Thank you very much for coming on. That was, I think, great. And that went better than we could have hoped. Just a little randy in the middle there. So, uh, so yeah. Severe, next time, different suit, please. Different suit? You sure? <laughs> okay, I be careful. He has access to the Finnish Shadow Council. He can make you go disappear if you no insult shit. him. Mm. Okay. Oh, no shit. Mahogany. <laughs> Mahogany. <laughs> If you're oh, looking at me and my tight crotch, that's not my problem. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if there's any last words, Darker and Lyra, if you got anything, uh, any shout outs or otherwise. Uh, CCO7, August 29th. Oh, yeah, CCO7. I shot. should hopefully be there yeah. if I'm actually alive. Uh, good, 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 good. To get my spot. Everyone come by, <laughs> get shot in the face. Limited Wait, slots, no. 100 slots. Have fun. All right, that's it. TVT. Uh, TVT. Insurgents versus uh, Blue 4. Lyra, hit us. Yes. <laughs> And surgeons are going to get fucked. <laughs> yeah, we are. I'll send you a bill for the brain damage of me uh, having to relive those events. In fact, I'll take the, I'll take the money behind uh, Whale oh, behind, back there on yeah, that. Yeah, on the, on the table. Yeah, there's, there's a, a, yeah. a called suitcase full of money there as well. All right.